never know what's going on these days. <laughs> oh man, I swear. Whatever, it's streaming now. Okay, cool. Uh, I'll uh here. I'll share my screen just on the main screen here. <sighs> man, okay. Tuesday, Tuesday. Love us a Tuesday. I, uh, what was it? Today I was teaching partial differential equations earlier, man, dude. It was that racket. Hard? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is hard. It's most definitely hard. Here, I'll, I'll show you, like, some of what it is, dude. I mean, it's something where, like, I haven't taught it in a while. Um, so, I mean, I can do it, but I have to remember it. And when I haven't done it in a while, it becomes kind of annoying to try to remember because <laughs> it's 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 tricky stuff tricky 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 well that's what happened to me like my teacher gave me a review from like i think two months ago and i just can't remember crap yeah I expect us to know everything like no well way. yeah you got to kind of remember stuff you know come on we have other class come on like, he says come on he like says. we don't have one single class we have other ap's too yeah so this is this is for example like what I had to teach today. It's kind of difficult. Bro, is that an essay or is it an actual question? This is a question. This is a partial differential equations question. Oh, what's up, Mondo? Appreciate the sub. <laughs> Yellow brother. Yes, Mondo. I love you, dude. Ayo. Was there a big update for Call of Duty, Mondo? I just got like a massive amount of download stuff for Battle.net. Yes. Heart, heart, dude. Heart. Yes. Yeah. Oh, also, there's new season two, of the finals, dude, which looks hella dope, man. If anyone hasn't watched the trailer for the finals season two, dude, I'm so, I'm so about that, dude. One second, let me show it to you guys. It's so good. It's so cool. Uh, finals season two. I think it was it was trending like yesterday, like number one thing on uh on YouTube. Very cool. The clock is counting down, and the retros need to make a move to avoid getting knocked down. Ooh, hackers! Ooh, shadow ban. Did it go away? All right, nice, dude. I really think this is like one of the freshest games to come out for first-person shooters in probably the last couple years, and I'm very excited for season two. It looks really cool. They're adding a new map. They're adding some new gadgets so i think this thing like creates like portals that you can go through looks super dope uh and then they're creating this thing that you can change objects in the map and then this thing that just like takes out parts of the map you can shoot through which is really cool and then anti-gravity cube i don't know they just they just started adding like all this crazy stuff to it yeah and there's a new game mode i think there's a 5v5 on it yeah yeah, 5v5. You still want to just be 3v3. Three, three, three. Anyways. And this this mode where, like, you have a platform that, like, goes through the entire map and you have to, you know, move it through. Yeah. Anyways. Looks dope. I'm super excited. One of the freshest games I've played in a while. Yes. Our lord and savior, dude. All-powerful Emperor Elon Musk decided to unban you Mondo Thighs. Yeah! <laughs> He's too good, dude. He's built different, man, dude. That's what happens. Mondo just, like, drops, like, constant nukes in Call of Duty multiplayer, and they think he must be hacking. Yes. Anyways. Yeah. Very cool. I'm excited to get back in some gaming. I've been going through job interviews for the last week. I got, like, two rejections today, dude. Like, fuck, man. I made it to, like, the third round of interviews, and I just get this classic fucking HR bullshit response of, like... We're sorry, but, you know, we have an extremely small team and, like, you're extremely qualified, but we can't move forward. And I'm like, why? <laughs> Do you want to tell me why? <laughs> like, they don't tell you why. They just say, I don't know, just, dude, I, I fucking hate corporate, dude. I, this is why I hate it, dude. It's it's the worst. What kind of jobs was I looking for? Um, it were some content creator jobs. One of them was for Khan Academy, doing, like, physics and science videos, which I already do all the time. 
Uh, and the other one, yeah, was for IXL doing math videos. And they said they loved it. They're like, I love your videos. Like, I love everything. Blah, 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 blah. I get to, like, whatever, the second person, third. This is the annoying thing, dude. You send in a resume, right? That's cool. Whatever. Shoot off a bunch of resumes. It's just like, you know, blowing a load on a bunch of shit and seeing what sticks. Uh, and then maybe that gets back and they say, oh, cool. We liked your resume. Uh, now can you do this, like, test assignment? So then they give you, like, an assignment that takes, like, four hours to do. Uh, it's basically like free work. Uh, so I'd go do that. Cool. You make it past that. Then they say, okay, cool. We'd love to interview you. And then you do an interview. Uh, and then after that, they're like, okay, cool. Maybe we'll get back to you. And then you wait another week and then yeah, just get a nice little rejection email. It's okay. I've, I've been rejected tons of times. It's okay. Re rejection lasts shorter than regret is what I say. You always shoot your shots. They're just using interviews to get free lab labor. Yeah, probably dude. <laughs> Bro, dude, I, dude, I'm gonna show you dude, some of this fucking bullshit, dude, I had to do for them. Like, fuck these guys, dude. What, what is it? Uh, what was it? Uh, Khan Academy. Uh, take home test. This was it. So I had to do this whole thing, dude. Performance task. There's my address. If you want my address, I don't care. But I had to write, like, a multiple choice question, and then I had to provide the whole solution. For I wrote all this shit. And then I had to provide another question, provide some solutions. Great. Then I had to do this. I had to write these things. Questions, solutions, questions, solutions. And then they had something with feedback. I had to provide feedback on this. I had to rewrite it, dude. I had to do all of it. This. this is eight pages of work <laughs> to get to another round of interviews for maybe the chance of getting some extra money from these people. Uh, it's like writing proofs. It's like, this was like, this position was more of writing um, like additional questions for their courses and stuff. Which was cool. I have a ton of experience, obviously, after teaching for a fucking decade in this field of I do questions all the time. So I know what gets asked and I know what to switch on asking the question to really poke at like what kids don't get. But I don't I don't know. Just you know, didn't didn't work its way out. It's OK. It looks like spec work in the art. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of stuff, man, dude. Yeah, it's OK. We decided to go another direction? Yeah, dude. Bro, that's always what they say. They say, like, dude, this reminds me when my, my fucking ex broke up with me, dude. She was in HR. Dude, fuck HR. I hate HR. Uh, same thing. I just got, like, this textbook, like, like bullshit, like, numb as fuck response. And it's they can't they can't tell you what, what's really going on. They just say, like, you know, oh, it's not you, it's me or something. I'm like, what? No, it's not. <laughs> like, what? what is it? <laughs> what is it? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, do this project and see your workflow. Oh, what pay? No, no, you aren't pay yet. Yeah, exactly. I get where you're coming from, but yeah, you know. yeah, whatever. It's okay. We'll, uh, you know, I still have one more thing I'm in the running for. It's a, it's a salary position actually. It's like 90k, which would be nice. I would love 90k. <laughs> um, but I, I'm kind of like disillusioned at this point. I don't even know if I want to finish the assignment for it because, again, it took me like three hours this morning just to get halfway through it. And I'm going to throw it off and probably get rejected again. And I don't know. At this point, I'm just like, I could use that three hours to do so many other things. Uh, I don't know. Keep on keeping on. Yeah, man, dude. Yeah, just keep on pushing. Don't quit, baby. We don't quit. All right. Cool shit. Enough of that. Let's do some math questions. All right, start the stream. Welcome everyone to Actual Education. My name is Dr. Gold. This is the Office Hour stream. We help you out with math homework, science homework, all types of fun stuff. Thank you, chat, for listening to me with my rants today. <laughs> now teach us math. I've been rejected so many times over the years I'm about to resort to selling feet pics. Yeah. <laughs> Bro, I see some stuff online where like some like digital marketers are being like, yo, you look, there's this girl who's getting people to pay for her medical bills and her school debt and whatnot. Y'all should do it, too. But then fail to realize, you know, if you're not a cute girl with tits, you ain't getting shit. <laughs> like you can't be some dude up there being like, hey, he wants to pay my bills. <laughs> Nobody. Nobody's going to pay your bills. <laughs> uh, what's up, Teacup? Yes, it's okay. It's okay. I, 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 I'm i ranting a lot today. All right. What we got for questions? <sighs> can you do mine after 4.30? Yes, I can. Who we got? We got Equity. What's up, Equity? Equity's got some cool math ones. Let's see if Equity's here. <sighs> equity. <laughs> for, for reals. Yeah, dude. 
Uh, if Equity's here, we'll do Equity's question. Well, we can't have that one. That one gets me. Yeah. Equity, where you at, dude? We're just going to have all the people waiting, dude. <laughs> Equity, where you at, dog? <laughs> all right, what's that? Casey says, there's kind of a guy version of this, but you have to be kind of smarmy and slyly and flirty with people, but without crossing the line to creepy and it's tough and it's gross. Don't recommend. Yeah, I'd, yeah don't recommend either. Don't. Don't don't sell yourself for the feed picks. Yeah, no. Okay, here we got Q Equity. I got Cuber. Okay, uh, Cuber's here. Or Obama. Obama, what's up? I know you were just in the chat. Let's go through your question. Everyone submits questions, but I need y'all to show up on time when you're here. <laughs> the just hanging around. Yeah. Who's that guy called? It's a name from Nate. His name is Beetlejuice, I think. It's Beetlejuice. Yeah. Uh, Obama, Bob, or Taco Cat. I like all these questions. These are all great ones. And Partial Fractions. Ooh, I like that too. These are good. Live a life you actually want to look back on, enjoy at the end, not be embarrassed about, I say. Yeah. Which, believe me, dude, growing up, man, dude, I have, I have a couple friends who are like straight up porn stars. Like pretty good porn stars. And they fucking love what they're doing. So whatever. All power to them. You know, I don't, you know, I think unfortunately that industry tends to kind of eat people's souls away, but there are some people that really just love what they do. Cool. No regrets. Do what you want. Uh, it pays well. <laughs> uh, but yeah, don't, don't do things just cause you have to, which I feel like I get to at some point, man, with, especially with like these four A's in the core. I do not want to go into corporate. I a hundred percent do not want to go into corporate. I don't want to work for companies. I do not want to deal with HR, but, yeah. uh, economics are fucked these days. And so like, I gotta, I gotta find something or I gotta start selling feet pics. What's up, Obama? Let's see your question. What's up? You need help with this one? Yeah. You're okay, Casey. It's all right. You can talk whatever you want. I got a package my thing right now. I'll call you. That's cool, Cuber. You're good. Okay, good. Yes. All right. What's up? You need, you need help with this? Match the function notations with the representation in the graph. Yeah. Yeah. I got no clue what, what those equations even mean. Okay, well, the blue one is f of x. Well, just let's just say that real quick. They, they, these are called functional transformations, is what this is, which is just big fancy math words for like move move the graph around. <laughs> okay. Okay. Cool. All right. So blue is the f of x graph. All right. Uh, and then here are different things. Do you see how sometimes like that number is is like inside the parentheses, and sometimes it's outside the parentheses, and I don't know, sometimes it's doing some other shit? Yeah. Do you know how those work? Yeah. No. Do you have, Okay, he doesn't know. It's okay. Well, let's teach you. All right. I've done it. I've done it before. Okay. Well, I'm just. I'm gonna remind you real quick. You'll get it, dude. All right. Let's say, for instance, I have uh, uh, f of x is equal to I don't know, like uh, x squared. Do you know what this graph looks like? You know what? You know what x squared looks like? Is it like a u? Yes, it's like a u. It's like a u, man. Hell yeah, dude. Okay. All right. What happens if I say like x squared minus uh, minus three? I don't know. Let's say it's minus three. What happens to this graph? And if you don't know, uh, you can always, you can always I, I, just. I, I, you, you move it to one side, but I don't well, okay. Know. So let's figure out. Let's figure it out. Okay. So here, here's what I'm. If you ever get lost, Obama, like if you're on like a test and you're like, I don't know what the fuck to do. Here's what you do, man. Think about like what the points would be usually. Okay. Let's do like this. Let's do x and y. Okay. If x equals zero for my function here, just f of x equals x squared. What is y? One. No. If I plug zero into here, what do I get? Just zero, right? Oh, zero. Yeah. yeah d d don't, 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 don't think about the minus three right now. Okay. What if we put in one? One. <laughs> yes, goes down. Yes, it does. Yeah, Mono's got it. Yes, it's one, right? And negative one is also one. Okay. Cool. You see how those are points we got here, dog? Got some big boy points here, right? Sweet. Okay. Now let's modify. So this is what they would call like the parent function. Sometimes is what they say. They call this like the parent. And then, yeah, I guess the child function <laughs> is what they call modifying it. So let's say we had f of x is equal to x squared minus 2, okay? Let's make a new chart. And let's just do the same shit. Let's just see what happens, okay? So now, for instance, if x equals 0, what does y equal? Is it 0 again? Bro, if I plug in 0 here, dog, what do I get, dude? Come on. Come on, dude. Zero, just zero, right? Okay, but it's zero minus two. It's still minus two here, dude. Oh, right. Yeah, there we go. Yes, okay. Awesome, cool. What about one? What do I get? 
Still negative two? No. Okay. One, one squared one minus squared is, is one. Not one times two. One squared is one. One times one is one. Okay. okay. What's one minus two? Negative one? Yes. Good job, Casey Snowart. Yes, good. Okay. And then what is it if it's negative one? You did a math. You did, dude. You get it. Yes. Good job, dude. Negative one? Uh, you also get one. Yes. Good job. Awesome. Cool? Um, yeah. All right. So now let's graph what that looks like, right? When x equals zero, do you see like I'm down here? Okay. Mm -hmm. And now when it's one, we're down here at minus one. And then here when it's minus one, we're at one. Okay. So this probably looks something like, I don't know, this or something. Well, you don't, don't get me on the, the horizontal thing, but whatever. Okay. Uh, fuck. I don't know. Looks something like this. Yeah. Okay. Point being, yeah, it just got shifted down by one. Do we see that? You see, it, got, it just got shifted down, right? Yeah. Yeah, good. Awesome. Nice. That's what happens, dude. Or and, Sorry, it got shifted down by two. I'm, I'm fucking stupid, sorry. Yeah, it got shifted down by two. Sorry. This goes down by two, right? Because it went from zero to negative two? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes, yes, Casey, yes. Uh, he's asking, where does this come from? Uh, the point of these graphs, these are called parabolas. Uh, they're very useful for what's called like projectile motion. So, for instance, anytime you throw something, like if I were to like throw a ball like this, okay, this would be the path of it. Say this was like the height as a function of time, it would look like this, like throwing a ball. You can think about, you know, hit a baseball or like, I don't know, throw a fucking football. Uh, they look like parabolas. And the reason why these are important is because you can always find out like what the maximum height is by seeing, you know, what this thing is called, which is the vertex. Here in this graph, this is the vertex and this is also the vertex. So, yeah, vertex moves around. Okay. Good. All right. So maybe we saw something here Obama, right? You know, if I put like a minus whatever like outside of the of the x stuff, okay? You see how it moves it down? Yeah. Okay. What if, I, what if I had another function? Let's say it was f of x is equal to x squared uh, plus 3. Which Where would that one look like? What, what would be going on? You go up 3. You go up 3. Ex thing. Yeah, exactly. Good. Okay, so yeah, 1, 2, 3. Looks like this. Nice. Nice. And we get something that looks like that. Okay. okay. Great. I should really call her. Uh, yeah, is, so that's that's what this looks like, right? Is is like this moves it up, this moves it down. Right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, no, you can always answer questions. Don't worry, dude. I'll, okay, so I'll get to them. Okay, so helpful for basic physics when you're judging speed. Yeah, helpful for judging what, like, the maximum height of something is. Uh, any function that's a quadratic... Okay, Obama, do you know what a quadratic is? You know what, like, a quadratic is? That long-ass equation? There's a big-ass equation for it, yes. There's the quadratic equation, right? Which is, like, x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root. I don't know, b squared minus 4 AC. This, this bitch, right? You know this one? Yeah, just never okay. use it. I don't, I don't think I've used it since algebra. You do, you do need to use it. You're going to have to use it a lot in life. Okay. So basically, if you have any equation that looks like this, ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero. Okay? Anything that looks like this. This is called a quadratic. Quadratics have something with x squared, something with x, and then something without x. And then, I mean, these can be zero, but in general, this is, this is what they look like. Um... These can always be written in what's called vertex form. Which is y is equal to x minus h squared plus k. Okay? Where... I'm just trying to, like, connect it all together for you, Obama. Okay. Where if you have... So these, these curves usually look something like this. And then this, which is the vertex, is located at h comma k. Okay. See how we have H and K on it? Just a little review. You need to know this eventually at some point. Yeah. So. Hopefully uh, not. <laughs> you do. You're definitely going to need to know to do, do this. Yeah. So what usually happens, and I'm not going to go over it in this lesson. If someone wants to ask, if someone wants to ask this as a later question, totally cool going through it. But there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a way to take quadratics that are in this form and turn them into this form. And that's called completing the square. And once you do that, that's how you can see something that looks a little complicated turn into something that's very easy and pretty to graph. And something that you can very easily see where either the minimum is 
or where the maximum is. And this goes all into eventually what's called optimization, uh, which optimization is like finding the best thing. So a lot of times uh, this is important, you know, even if like, for instance, we were doing business or something, right? Uh, there's always like, you know, the cost of the product to produce it goes down as you make more of it, but then you make less profit. So they like, they compete with each other and then you end up getting these curves where you can say, okay, that's where I make the most money. I need to like make this amount at this price. Uh, that it all comes down to this. These are all quadratics. Optimize optimization is all this stuff. Yeah, it's cool. All right, let's go back. Anyways. Cool. All right. So we saw we saw what happens when you have a vertical shift. Okay. Another way to write this 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 red function here, Jeffy. Let's say let's say I wanted to call it a new function. I'm going to call the red function g of x. Okay. That's the same thing as the parent function f of x, but adding two to it on the outside. Do you see that? Yeah. Yeah, good. Okay. All right. Now, okay. Yeah. So you see how like it's f of x and then something is outside the f of x, right? Like this whole thing was, yeah. was outside. Yeah. Because f of x is just x squared. So this, this whole thing here, right? It's just, it's just f of x. And then it's like minus two or plus two. I guess this one was technically minus two. Okay. Whatever. <clears throat> All right. That's a vertical shift. Okay. So anything outside the f of x will vertically shift it up or down. Uh, now we got to do horizontal shifts. Okay. Let's say again, I have uh, f of x, right, is equal to x squared. Now let's say I come up with a new function, all right? I'm going to call this function g of x, which I'm going to say is now, um, let's, let's put the red here, okay, uh, is equal to, let's say, x minus 2 squared, okay? Do you see how this, this Jeff, is different than this? Yeah. Right? This one, the 2 is inside the parentheses getting squared. This one, the minus 2 is outside. Yeah? Yeah, what's mm -hmm. up? What's up, noise? Uh, okay, so let's let's try to... I mean, you can predict what's going to happen. What do you think is going to happen to this graph? Where is it going to go? Just guess. It's okay. And we'll check it. Well, I, I know it's right or left. Good, you know it's right or left. Okay, you want to you see how we can figure out whether it's right or left? Yeah. All right, let's pick some points. Give, give me some points to try and graph. And then you got to tell me what the values are. Negative four. All right. That's a weird one to put in, but sure. Okay, fine. Negative four. Okay. What happens when I put negative four into this? What do I get? Watch. You get minus... My, yeah, you get 36. Yeah, which... <laughs> it's a big number, right? So let, let's pick something better, because I don't want to fucking graph 36 on this. Yeah, okay. Let's, let's pick something... Yeah, one. I like one. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I like one. Yeah, one's great. Okay. What happens when I plug one in? What do I get? Uh, one. Is it just one? Yeah, good. It's one minus two, which is negative one squared, which is just one. Good. Okay, cool. Uh, let's pick another point. Two. I like two. Two's great. What happens when you plug in two? Uh, zero? Or good. One? No, you get zero. Right? 2 minus mm -hmm. 2 is 2 minus mm -hmm. 2 is 0. 0 squared is 0, yeah. Mhm. Mm yeah, good job, Casey. Yeah, okay, cool. All right, and then let's give one more point. Let's just do 3. What happens if I put 3 in? Uh, 1. Good. Three. Good. 1. Yeah, 3 minus 2 is 1, 1 squared is 1. Okay. So let's graph this. Okay, watch. So if I go over, right? 1 2 3, right? At 2, right? At x equals 2, y is equal to 0 right? X equals to 1, yeah. Y is equal to 1. X equals to 3, Y is equal to 1. Do you see how this is now our function? Yeah. So what happened to it? Where'd it go? Uh, the right. It went to the right. Yes. Casey, you can, dude. I, I believe in Ca Casey. You can do is it. Is that okay. always the case? Yes. Negative is always right. Yes, they're backwards. So here, here's what I want to show you. So g of x being x minus 2, this is the same thing as f of x minus 2, okay? That's what this is, okay? Do you see this? Do you see how the thing in the parentheses becomes whatever's here, right? It just became x minus yeah. 2 squared? Yeah. Okay? Yes. So this is the important thing. Negative is to the left, 
and then positive is to the right. Oh, wait, fuck. I fucked that up, dude. Negative is to the right, positive is to the left. <laughs> My brain, dude. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm so scattered with things today. Yes, negative is to the right, positive is to the left. It's backwards. Usually positive is right, negative is left, right? Yeah. Cool? Mm -hmm. All right. So now knowing that, okay, so now, now we have a little technique, right? We know that if it's out here, right, positive is up, negative is down. If it's inside the parentheses, negative is right, positive is left. Uh, let's, try, let's try to do this shit now, dude. How do we do this? So again, the blue function is our parent function, right? So look at this one. What happened to this one? Where, where'd it go? Up. It went up. Okay, so, and how much did it go up by? Three. It went up by, th yeah, let's see. One, two, three. It went up by three. Okay. Which one of these shows it going up by three? B. Yes. Yes, good job, dude. You win. Nice. Okay. I think the so, self explanatory, right? I mean, well, no. A is three. A is. Th well, uh, okay, let's, let's, uh, let's check, let's check, let's check, because there are some weird things. Yes. So, right. Negative is to the left. And you see how this goes over by four? One, two, three, four. Yeah. Okay. Okay, but now this is kind of weird. All right, look at this one for, for C, right? Oh, I didn't realize that. Didn't. You see the two on the outside? Yeah. Yeah, two's kind of tricky. Um, what the two does, if it's outside here, is it's going to expand it vertically. It's going to stretch it out vertically if, it, if, it, if the number is greater than one. If it's a fraction, it's going to shrink it vertically. What's up, Cuber? Nice. Okay. Okay. So f of x plus 6. So first, look at what the what should the x plus 6 do to our function. Where should it go? To the left side? Good. To the left by six, right? So I got one, mm -hmm. two, two, three, four, five. Well, okay. But this is interesting. You have to take like where the, the center is. And I'll, I'll explain to that why. So here we go. One, two, uh, three, four, five, six. See how this is the center of it? Yeah? Yeah. So yes. It did go over to the, to the left by six. However, it also shrunk, right? Look how wide it was. So earlier, right? This thing was, um, or look how wide and long, I guess. Yeah. Look, do you see how this only had a length of what? Like from three down to zero, right? It only had a length of three. Yeah. Okay. But the length of this thing is now six, right? Mm -hmm. Um. So that's why this two was outside here because it doubled. It doubled how like stretched out it was vertically. Okay. So what if, what if it's negative? Does it just shrink again? Okay, Does if it it's more? negative, if it's negative, it flips it over what's called like this axis. Okay, that's another thing we got to go into. Yeah, because it's it's not whether it's negative; it's whether it's a fraction. Okay, if okay. this was instead of two, and if if this was one half, then it would compress by a factor of two. All right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's why this one is two. And then, yeah, okay, then we get even weirder here, though, okay? Because, yeah, look, we got the negative, right? So, mm -hmm. a negative on the outside will flip it over this axis, okay? That's why this, this like, sad face, you know, turns into a happy face. Do you see how, you see how it flips over? Like a mirror. It flips over like a mirror yeah. image. Yeah? Okay, cool. And then the additional weird thing here is, okay, look how the multiplier is now inside the parentheses. Do you mm -hmm. see that? Okay. Just like the left-right shit is backwards to the up-down stuff, whether you, like, stretch it out, up or down, is going to be opposite to whether you compress it, like, here inside the parentheses. Yeah. Okay, so here, if you have a number that's greater than 1, this is going to compress it horizontally. Okay? If it's, if it's greater than 1, Okay. If it's less than one, so like if it's a fraction, for instance, right? Then it's going to stretch it horizontally. Yeah, it's it's kind of mean, dude. Like, these were like gimme questions, and then they started combining like three different things here, dude. <laughs> Bro, <I don't> <laughs> like, like, well, because, yeah, I mean, they started doing this, and they started doing the flips. Just do, like, context clues. I mean, you can always plot points. You can always plot points. So that's what I want you to know, is that, like, if you ever actually get stuck, just plot the points. Just create a function, x squared, 
do whatever is changing to it and see what happens to it. Okay? But in general, so this is going to flip it over the x-axis, and then it's also going to compress it. That's why this, do you see how this thing looks like, like, like narrower compared to this one? Yeah. Yeah. So that's why it's four. I need to do like a video on this, but yeah, all, all the graphing transformations are kind of annoying. You're so right. Uh, noise. Grandstanding transformation, blah, 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 blah. There's like a, yeah, here we go. Yeah, this is this is the piece of paper. If you ever want to like like memorize something, dog, uh, which I hate memorizing stuff, but like this is useful. This is what it is. Damn. Well, this is what we kind of went over. Just I'll explain to it real quick, right? So remember the stuff on the outside. This was like the up down, right? Yeah. And then this was the left right. Okay, but then. The weird thing is that it's flipped, right? For for left, right, if it's negative, it goes to the right. And if it's positive, it goes to the left. Cool? Yeah. All right. Then here are the flips, okay? Reflecting over the x-axis is, for instance, like taking this and having it go to this. And that's what happens if the negative is outside of the f of x. But then you can also reflect over the y-axis, which is if you have something like this, which then turns into something like this. And that's if the negative is inside the the function okay mm -hmm. all right and then here's the stretches so if you have a multiplier on the outside and it's greater than one then it's going to stretch it okay if it's a fraction so if it's between zero and one then it's going to shrink it it's going to compress it vertically and then finally if the multiplier is inside the parentheses if it's right next to the x then it does the opposite um, where if it's a fraction, it stretches it horizontally, and if it's not a fraction, it shrinks it horizontally. This is probably the harder one, right. the dilation. I know. Yeah. Yeah, it's, I was gonna say. Kind of like. It has it has to do with this. Okay, so let's let's just say again, you have f of x x squared is is your function. Okay. Uh, so if we have f of like let's say like three x, okay, that would be three x squared. Versus if I have 3 f of x, okay, this is equal to 3 times x squared. These are different things, okay? Yeah. This is, this is going to compress it horizontally. This is going to stretch it vertically, which is kind of weird because horizontally stretching something is kind of the same as vertically compressing it. Does that make sense? Like, like you stretch something out, it gets shorter. It looks like it's getting shorter. Yeah. Whereas if like if yeah if you if you horizontal if like if yes it is yeah yeah well this is why it gets weird right yeah this is this is yeah okay so let's say for instance you have you have this right let's say this is your function or whatever it's a circle okay do you see how like if I compress it horizontally it seems like it's kind of stretching out more vertically oh right and by the same token if I compress it vertically it seems like it's stretching horizontally they're kind of the same thing. Yeah. So, that's where it comes from. Yeah. But yeah, just, you know, look at this and try to understand it. If you don't understand it, come back. Does that help you out? Does that, does that make a little bit more sense for you, dog? Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, then I don't think she's going to put that hard stuff. I'm going to come back tomorrow because I have more review. So. Good. Yeah, you got more review questions? Come back tomorrow. Let's help you out. Cool? Yep. All right. Good job, Obama. What's up, Ethan, dude? It's crack a lacking dog. I'm pretty tired. I'm yeah, I'm super tired too, man, dude. Why are you tired? Are you, are you sick? You know, You're not feeling good? No. I just didn't get too much of a good sleep last night. Oh no, that's not good. Well, I hope you're feeling better soon. That's what I say. What's up, Bob? Bob's back. Hey Bob. Sir Bob. Let me go through the chat real quick, sorry. <clears throat> um Graph transformation. Mind you, we didn't use the words like compressor stretch. We just said scale factor. Yeah, yeah, that's a common thing. Uh, da, da, da. Presume math context is like 50-50. Yeah, you can usually guess things in math, Casey. But like, always check. You can always check by just plotting points. 
Uh, sometimes I have to look hard at the answer key to make sure the answer I got was correct, but in a different form. That happens a lot in math. A lot of times, the the solution they'll give you is 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 a is like what they call like their simplest form, uh, and it's kind of like your opinion, man. Sometimes, like with what's like simplest. Like some people don't like radicals on the bottom. Some people don't like fractions. You know, you can move things around. Uh, yes, da 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 da. Frio Bob. Not gonna lie, I think I need the basic algebra math channel and then graduate slowly to this. This is already comprehensible. When do you do your remedial math for absolute beginner stream class? <laughs> Dude, this is it, bro. I teach everything, man. Like, I, I have like fifth graders come on the stream sometimes, dude, that they need help with, you know, adding and subtracting numbers. I think that's literally one of Cuber's questions. Like, not saying Cuber's a fifth grader, but, you know, but again, some of it can seem harder like this. Yes, that's harder math. Um, but some of it's also not too bad. Where did it go, dude? What? Excuse me. One sec. Uh, uh, oh, I thought I had Cuber's question up here. But yeah, here we go. This is this is like an example of you know uh, some easier math that gets asked. This is this is an example of like Cuber's question. I need to get in some pre-algebra and then do algebra. Yeah, yeah, it's not that bad. Cuber, I didn't call you fifth grade. It's okay. I'm just saying it's easier. It's okay to be easier. I wish everything in life was easier, honestly. Fucking sh sucks when shit's hard. <laughs> What's up, Dan? I appreciate the follow. <clears throat> yeah. Well, Nick is one to talk, bro. Like, <laughs> Nick. <laughs> Nick, you don't get to talk about your homework. <laughs> I need to drop some stupid series questions, which I sometimes don't understand, and sometimes I do. Yeah, that's a great example. I think that's what um, Bob has. Bob has a, a pretty serious series question. Um, so it's okay, equity. Here, Cuber, let me do yours. It just as an example of something that's, you know, not as, like, ridiculously difficult. And then I will do Bob's question, which is going to be ridiculously difficult. So, uh, let's do both. Yeah. What's up, Ethan? Um, I have a math test tomorrow. Could you help me with the question I have there? Yes, yes, put it up. I'll do it. Yo, thank you for the follow, Play Doku. Okay. Uh, one some quick thing for Casey here, who's he's looking for like okay, I don't know if this is free or you can create an account or something, but and again, this is one of the companies that rejected me today, but whatever. Uh, if you go here to IXL, they have all the grades and all the maths maths. So for instance, if you're like I need to refresh on my algebra, you can literally just click on this, dude. And they have, like, every single topic. So let's say, for instance, you don't really remember uh, how square roots work. You can click here on square roots, and they have questions. You know, here, what's the positive square root of 64? I know that's 8. Yay. You get a point, you know? So you can go back through and just run through these, man. Uh, I'm she, by the way, but it doesn't really matter. Okay, she, yeah. She, he, whatever. Yes, cool. Um... I'm gonna go to the enemy to learn. I want to go there on principle because they were they were mean to you. I appreciate that, Casey. It's all good. No, it's okay. I honestly I don't like these people, anyways. Uh, okay, I got too distracted in seventh grade by deciding to draw a dragon comic, my bestie, instead of paying attention. I was just never caught back up after that. Math was my favorite subject before that year. Yeah, it's okay. There's always still time, Casey. Yeah, you got tons of time to figure it out. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's all good. Okay. Uh, there's always still time. That's that was my that was my thing I said yesterday. I said if you're reading this, there's still time. There is always still time. Okay, Cuber, what's up? Let's do your question, Cubes. Oh, we need to get rid of this. I don't need that. There we go. Okay, cool. All right. Uh, what's up? You want to come to the stage, Cuber? You want to talk? You can come talk. Yeah. Here. IXL is free. Uh, I think it is. I think yep. if you want. I think if you if you want to like keep your scores, it's not free. Um, I don't know why they rejected me equity. They just they just did. <laughs> That's the beauty of fucking HR. Dude. All right, what's up, cubes? We need to do this. What this week's oh. number is four. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, you're good. Yeah, is my mic working? Yeah, your mic's great, dude. Nice, crispy, bruh. dude. Crispy, bruh. Okay. Uh, okay. Is it? <laughs> is it? <laughs> is it? That, that's <laughs> okay. Here we go. This week's number is four. This is kind of fun. So wait, they just give you a fucking number and then they just tell you to do stuff with it? Is this really what they do in your class? It's kind of fun. Yeah? Uh, it's just every week. Oh, like, okay. Get down the basics of math. I'm g yeah, no, good, dude. Yeah, basics are foundational, dog. Yeah, okay, cool. Well, let's do it. Square it. What's four squared? Do you know that? 16. 
16? Nice. Right. Yeah, that's yeah, 16. Cool. Good good shit, dude. Okay. What happens when I cube it? Uh, what does it mean to cube I something? Heard it was, I'm not sure by it. People, I heard people saying like four times four times four times four. Yeah, so anytime you got an exponent up here, like four to the third, that's like four times four times four. You, you multiply it by itself three times is what it is. That's what four cubed is. Okay. So oh, people were saying four times. Oh know. well, that that would be that would be that would be four to the fourth. Uh, which yeah. I, I don't know if there's a word for that. Yeah, cube is three. The reason why things are a cube, right? Because uh, cubes have like three dimensions, right? Like if you if you if you were to drag draw a cube, right? There's a length, there's a width, and there's a height. That's why that's why like we say cubed is the third power one. Yeah. Okay. Do you know how to do four times four times four? I mean, you know, you know what four times four is. Oh uh, yeah, I, th I think it'd be uh, 64, right? Good, yeah. Yeah, 4 cubed is, is 64. Reason for that is four, 4 times 4, 16. 16 times 4, 64. These are good things to know, man. Dude, all these, these are like, like powers of 2 is kind of what they are. Have you ever noticed when, if you do things in like uh, computer shit, do you ever see like 16 gigs, like 32, 64, 128? Do you see these numbers? Yeah. yeah. These are all powers of 2 is what these are. 1024, 2048. Yeah. So this is, for instance, uh, what is this? 2 to the 4th, 2 to the 5th, 2 to the 6th, 2 to the 7th, 2 to the 8th, and so forth and so forth. So uh, good numbers. I my uh, school's uh, dad had like 156 gigs of RAM. Good, yeah gigs, yeah. gigs of RAM is usually this. It's usually like 128, 256. Nowadays, everyone, uh, yeah. So this is what they actually call one gigabyte. Uh, it's it's actually uh, 1,024 megabytes, which is weird. It has to do with how partitioning works. Partitioning is like so when you put data on a hard drive, it's either a one or a zero, right? That that's how like that's how stuff gets stored as data, and th because of that, everything's like powers of two. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just a thousand. It's not a thousand. A gig is a gig is technically ten twenty four, and this is why. For instance, you ever notice when you buy a hard drive and it says it's one one terabyte or whatnot, and it's not. And you're like, did I get lied to? Have you, have you ever noticed that? Like, like that, that the hard drive, it's different. It's like one, it's like one terabyte is not <laughs> one thousand gigabytes. Yeah. Yeah. This this is it. So any so any time. Yo, I'll show you. I'll show you. It, it has to do with it has to do with that 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 difference. Uh, once, can I just get this image bigger? Yeah, there we go. Okay. So, for instance, yeah, if if you buy a hundred gigabyte hard drive because of how they advertise it, yeah, they say that like, oh yeah, it's 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 a it's a hundred gigabytes, but in reality, uh, or or a terabyte's the the better one here. So a, a terabyte's supposed to be a thousand gigabytes. But because of how gigabytes and terabytes are technically defined in terms of like the the that those powers of two, remember that ten twenty four thing I showed you? Uh, it actually only ends up being nine hundred and thirty gigabytes. So y you buy a terabyte and you're like, wait, where did ninety gigs go? Like, <laughs> anyways, that's just some some random math knowledge stuff. But it it comes from the powers of two. I just wanted to show that to you. Okay, whatever. Okay, list all its factors. What are the factors are for? I don't know. Okay, so factors is like what numbers multiply together to get you four. That's what it was. Uh, uh yeah. What a two, two number? Right? Yeah, two. Yeah, two. Yeah, two is a factor for sure. Right. What else? <laughs> I think that's all right. What about what about one and four? I think one and four are technically multiples oh. of, of factors of four. <laughs> Nick says, "Why can't they just give you a thousand gigabytes?" Again, it's the difference in I, technically a gigabyte is a thousand, but how a computer reads it, it only reads it as ten twenty four, or it reads it as ten twenty four. That's what it needs to see. Has to do with like the data. Yeah, they wouldn't sell it as like here's a ten twenty four gigabyte hard drive. They just say it's, they just say it's a gig, uh, uh, a terabyte. Okay, first five multiples. What are the first five multiples of four? Uh, would that be four? Uh, 
16, 20. Good. All right. Yeah. Casey's asking, what's a factor? That's really cool. Yeah, that's a good question, actually. Four is kind of fucking easy to find factors, but like, yeah, let's. A factor is, for instance, like what numbers multiply together to get you that number. So let, let's make something like a little bit harder, right? Let, let's say, for instance, we had 16. Sometimes what you do is you build out like a factor tree, Casey, where you'll just start listing numbers that multiplied together to this. So, for instance, one and 16, two and eight, three doesn't go into 16, so there's nothing there, but then there's four and four. Uh, five doesn't work, six doesn't work, seven doesn't work. Then you have eight and two, but then they just start repeating is what happens. So you, you can really just stop here. Um, cause you can see eight and two, right? And then 16 and one, these are duplicates of, of these. Yeah. Yeah. What's up, Don DDM. DDM. What's up? What's up? What's up? My guy, dude, the Don father, dude, we love Don. Don's the best dude. Yes. Shout out, shout out, shout out to Don, uh, Don, yeah, there you go, shout out Don does math, yeah, yeah, it, you know, Casey, you were asking me earlier, you need to, like, learn math, we have so many other math streamers here that stream math, they're all of the ones, go through and just click on all of them and follow all of them, and they'll, uh, they'll tell you when they're streaming and stuff, um, and you can hop on their streams and just ask whatever math questions, they, they, we teach everything, everything from, like, again, earlier, you know, Lower level math to super high level college stuff. Yes. Yeah, go check them out. They're great. Um, sweet. Okay. So yeah, those are factors. Uh, okay, let's just let's wrap this up, Cuber. What's 50% of four? Two. Two, good. What's 25%? One. What's 75%? Three. Good. Find the square root of four. Ooh, what's that? Yep. Okay, this is one that kind of screws with people sometimes. The greatest common factor. Do you know what GCF is? No. GCF. Okay. It means out of I these. I think it's like. Mm -hmm. what, what can they like? Like, what's the? Is it the biggest thing that like they can the, both go into? It's the biggest factor that they both share. Okay. So we already said for four, right? Four's factors were one and four, and uh two and two okay if we build out a factor tree for 18 i get what one and 18 two and nine uh three and six four doesn't go into it five doesn't go into it and then we start repeating six and three once you start repeating here you can just stop like no. just don't go any further you're done okay you so yeah so yeah which one is it casey got it but yeah which one is it cuber which one is it is what's it the two it is two. Uh, yeah. yeah, see how there's Wait, a why, two why here? Have... What's up? Why he... Oh. oh, okay. Yeah, see? There's a two here and a two here. That's the greatest common factor. Yeah, so just list out all the factors from both and you'll figure it out. Cool. Uh, find the area and perimeter of a square that measures four feet on all sides. Label your answers with the correct units. Yeah, this is good. Okay. Well, that's, that's not a square. That is a circle. <laughs> okay. So here... They're saying that we have uh, a square that looks like this. What's the perimeter? What's the area? Yeah, good case. Right? Yeah, they are. Right, good. So perimeter is just adding up all the sides, right? Which is just 4 plus 4 plus 4, which is really just 4 times 4. But here, we'll show you why it is. 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4, right? And then the area is equal to the length times the width, which is 4 times 4. This equals 16. This equals 16. Uh, do you know the units? says feet, uh, right? Feet. Yeah, but what's the units for area then? It's not feet. Do I know spherical geometry? Oh. Stop, Jeff. <laughs> oh, I was about to write. It's just 16. Oh. Uh, yep. 16 yeah, what's the units there? with the two on top. Good. Yes, it's feet squared. Square feet. That's what area is. Wait, what? For, for area? Oh, so do I just put a, two, I put a two on top of the... You put an exponent on top of the feet. Yeah, you do. <laughs> Jeff says I was serious. I, I, think, I think I think we were taught to like sixteen and then like what are you SQ talking? with the two on top. You can do you can say no, you can say SQFT. That's square feet. Or you can do feet squared. Oh, okay, okay. And then the perimeter is just sixteen feet. Okay. Cool? Make more sense to you dog? Yeah. Nice, good job, dude. Yeah. Woo!
Equity said, what happened with Khan Academy? Uh, also got a rejection today from them. All good. <laughs> oh, good. That would have been a sweet job. Yeah, that was, I think, they were giving out 7K part-time per month. Dude, I would have loved that. That would have helped me out a lot, but it's okay. Uh, Jeff says, do I know spherical geometry? Well, that, that depends, man. When I, I know how to calculate some stuff of spheres, but it, is there like a special form of math called spherical geometry? Is it like, is it different than regular geometry? Uh... Like, I can think sometimes of, uh, what is it, spherical geometry. I th spherical geometry is cool because you can have, like, triangles that have more than 180 degrees, right? Uh, like this. Yeah, this th this is, like, super wacky stuff, man, dude. Yeah. Uh, oh, this stuff is so cool. Uh, I don't, I don't super know this. I'm not super knowledgeable on this, but it is cool. This is how you can have triangles, for instance, that have larger interior angles than 180 degrees. Yeah. Okay, my question, how can I characterize a spherical rectangle in rectangular coordinates? Oh. Uh, do they have to be on the same latitude then? Is that kind of like what this is? I feel like this is what we're looking at, right? A sp wait, it, yeah, w sorry, what's your definition of a spherical rectangle? Wyoming is an example. Okay. Uh, I I would think uh, I mean we can do it in spherical coordinates, right? So what is spherical coordinates again? Uh, I, I think it's like uh, let's remember. I think x is equal to r cosine theta sine phi, y is equal to r cosine theta uh, cosine phi, and then what is it? It's like Z is equal to just R sine theta. I, I, one second. Let me just look it up. I know what it is. It's something in physics. Wait, wait, wait. Spherical to uh, Cartesian. Yes. Where are you? Where Where are you? Where are you? Dot, dot, dot. Okay. Just, can I just get it, please? What? Oh, man. Just like, where? where is it? Oh, that's X. Where's X? There we go. This is what I want. Yeah, this is what I want. The modified spherical coordinates can be obtained in the Cartesian coordinates. Oh, this is cool. Yeah, this is, I think, what I want, right? Uh, but where's Z? Oh man, they have the inverse and stuff. This stuff gets super crazy, dude. Oh, I passed it. Oh, my bad. Uh, da da da. Okay, here we go. Yeah, this is it. This is what. I, yeah, this is what I was saying. Okay, cool. It's this. Thank you. Yes. There you go. Was I close? I feel like I was close. I maybe like messed up my. <laughs> yeah, no, I was actually kind of backwards on something. <laughs> Actually, I need a good definition of spherical regular, but now I'll settle for this. My face is, yeah, I know. Yeah, no, no, dude. Math wiki pages can get super intimidating. Yeah, Casey, I know that. Yes. Uh, dun, dun, dun. Horror increases. I think by spherical geometry in three dimensions. Yeah. So what what they're talking about? So here is is um. Let's say uh. Here we go. Uh, rectangle. In spherical geometry, a little, just a little gra graph of what it, what it would be. This is like an example of a of a rectangle. Ooh, they call it like a quadrangle and a loon, dude. There's so many weird words here, dude. What? Excuse me. Let's see this, dude. Yeah, so I guess this is like a rectangle. Because are, are the angles are ninety, right? Is that that's the definition of a, of a rectangle, I guess, right? Or is it that it's four sides, four sides that are too parallel. Trig is beautiful. It is, yeah. So yeah, this is this is this. That looks annoying. Isn't the sine of zero just zero? It is. Okay, but this isn't a zero. Sorry. So uh, these are different coordinates. So this is this is for instance this is this is what they call theta, and then this is what they call phi. And if you want to see that in here, we're just gonna we're gonna go to some. This is cool. Spherical uh, coordinates. There's probably a picture we can show. Yeah, there we go. Uh, 
Let's pull this in. This is what they are. Yeah. Yeah, it's a uh, pen sender. You need two parallel sides. Angles will add up to the larger to larger than 360. Yeah, two, yeah, I guess so. Right, because with a triangle, you just need three sides, and that can be whatever. I get, it, wh what's the largest interior angle you can have on a triangle and spherical coordinates? Yeah, exactly, yeah. I mean, so yeah, this is where it comes from, guys. It's, it's, it's just, yeah, theta can be any angle. So theta describes how far you are away from, uh, I think what they call the zenith. I think this is called the zenith. So it's like the line that goes straight up and down in a, in a sphere. And then phi describes the angle... Uh, away from the x axis in what we call here like the xy plane okay and then r just describes uh how far you are from the center of uh of the circle to like whatever coordinate in a sphere r is constant right just like a circle has that uh the radius here is always the same a, a circle is defined as like all the points that are equal equ equidistance in a 2d plane from like a center so yeah the goal is to find the largest spherical rectangle you can fit inside the U USA. Is it the size of like, I don't know, a Big Mac or something? Is, like, is that the biggest is that the biggest rectangle we can put in the USA? Yeah. Yeah, just bound it by two. That's what I think. Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think it, it I think that's what you y'all were talking about like with with the quadrangles, right? Where was it? Where, where is it? This, right? Um yeah. So if you wanted to just make a rectangle, right, you just need to, th this is the whole latitude and longitude thing, right? You just need to get two latitudes and two longitudes. So you, you would need, for instance, whatever this is and whatever this is, and then you'd have to do uh, this and this. Um, how to find that area, I, I guess, would be a, uh, well, oh, no, you want the coordinates in Cartesian. Um... Yeah, I mean, I, that's not too bad, I guess, right? I mean, because this is, this is literally whatever your your latitude is, right? And then this is basically your longitude. So just just pick two. I see all the tricks. Yeah, you could double integral it. Yeah, right. Yeah, you could just. Yeah, if you yeah if you wanted to find the area, you would double integral. It would be it would be, you know, uh, r is constant, but then it would be something like, uh, d phi, d this. And uh, it's probably an R in there somewhere. <laughs> yeah, there's probably an R in there as well. I think it's like probably R sine theta, whatever this is. Latitude, cosine, yes. Yeah, but are there spherical rectangles that aren't on latitude longitudes? Uh, cosine the latitude Time, times that. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's cool. It's cool stuff. This is, you know, people ask me, right? Like, what's what's all the higher level math stuff? This is this is where it can come. It comes into play, right? If you want to start doing cool stuff with like the Earth and like spheres and like maps and stuff, this is all. This all. It's, it's all good. Yeah. What's up? Good to see. You. Yeah. Pen Center. All all the math guys. I love all you guys. We've got a cool little community here of math people. Uh, this is mad confusing, bro. I hope I don't have to do this in the future. Yeah. So people might ask, like, where do I actually have to use this? Uh, when you start doing things in physics. I think there you start getting a lot of things into in spherical coordinates. Um, so yeah, whenever we have to do things in spherical geometry, so that means whenever whenever things are symmetric as if they were a sphere. An example for this is um, let's say like light projected uh, from a source. Okay, so for instance, when when light in in three dimensions. Um, goes out from a light bulb it goes out equally in all directions spherically and uh this also happens happens with uh, electric potentials electric fields and these things in physics you have to then like integrate over these it's convenient to change your coordinate system to something that's symmetric about what you're studying so if you're studying stuff that like expands outwards in 3ds in equal directions everywhere then it makes more sense to do stuff in that coordinate system uh, yeah, I think he's going to Lancaster noise. I think he is. Okay, uh, here, let me do... I, I know I know. Uh, Bob's been waiting. Let me do Bob's question real quick. Uh, we, I might need you, math guys, because this is the... Are we doing convergences? What are we doing here, Bob? What's up? 
Uh, I think it's radius of convergence. Radius of convergence. Let me pull it up. Uh, yeah. Where is it? Okay, you need help with number twelve. Let's see what we got. All right. Yeah. Express the function as the sum of a power series by first using partial fractions. Find the interval of convergence. Okay. Cool. Um, okay, we want to express this partial at... Fractions is hard. Partial fractions is a little tricky, yeah, okay. I mean, the first thing is, I, I think you want to try to, like, factor this, right? Do you know how to factor this? Yeah, you gotta... Yeah, but, and, and dude, this is a bitch, right? Because you're factoring w oh. something where, where this thing is not one, right? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or yeah, a quadratic yeah. formula. No, you could do the quadratic formula. I, I do this way, so I just multiply these two numbers together, right? So 2 times negative 1, right, is negative 2. Mm -hmm. And then I see what yeah. what multiplies to negative two but adds up to negative one. Oh, adds up to negative one but multiplies to negative two. Multiplies to negative two, adds to negative adds to negative one. Negative two plus one. Negative yes, good. Negative two and one. Okay, and then here I'm going to show you my way of doing this because I I hate the other methods. I just I just love my method. Okay, all right. I put whatever's here in the top right. 2x squared. I put whatever's here in the bottom, The uh, sorry, top top left. I, may, I put this in the bottom right. And then whatever these things are, I'm going to attach on the diagonals, and I'm going to put an x on them. Okay, so I can put minus 2x and positive 1x. Okay? Yeah. Does that make sense so far? Yeah. Okay. Alright, I'm going to slow down a little bit. Okay, then I want to factor something out of this entire uh, row. What, what, what comes out of both things in the rows here? What can I factor out of? Negative. Negative 2x. You could factor it. To, let's just factor out a 2x. Just Let's just make things nice. Just like factor out a 2x. You could factor out negative 2x, but then uh, that yeah. would be weird. Okay. So then what I do is I say, okay, 2x times what gets me 2x squared? Um, 2x times x squared. How many times x? Times x. Good. Cool. Times x. All right. Cool. x times what gets me 1x? 1. Good. <clears throat> Last part here, 2x times what gets me minus 2x? Um, negative 1. Negative 1. And you can always check this. Do you see how 1 times negative 1 is negative 1? Yeah. Nice. That means that this whole thing now becomes this times this. Okay? So now this is x plus 2 over x minus 1, 2x plus 1. Okay? Okay. Seem a little bit better, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know. I like doing this. I know some math people here are going to be horrified, but it works. <laughs> and I remember it. So that's why I teach people. Uh, no offense, but can you not just do these by looking at it? Some people can, noise. Some people can. But I think the majority of people cannot. And so that's why I have to sh I have to show this trick. You're right. At this point, I've been doing this for so long, I can look at this and just see it's this. But this gets trickier if we start having different numbers. So I, I'd, I'd rather, like, teach the method. And as long as they know the method, then no matter what happens here, they'll still be able to default and do it. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. Uh, so I know this is going to... Because these are just regular, um, regular factors, right? There's no, like, x squared. There's no, like, whatever repeated roots. Uh, yeah. I know this is going to equal to something over x minus 1 plus something mm -hmm. else over 2x plus 1. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What I'm going to do next here, Bob, is I'm going to take this whole thing here. I'm going to take this whole thing and I'm going to multiply it by everything over here. Yeah. Okay. Which means when this whole thing goes inside here, this one will cancel with this one. Yeah. So I'll just be left with. Good, exactly. So this is A2x plus 1 plus Bx minus 1. And this is all equal to x plus 2. All right. Now let's start yeah. like, you know, expanding shit a little bit. So this is uh, 2x times a plus a plus uh, x times b minus b, okay? Mm -hmm. And now you have to group by powers, okay? So I want everything that has at least an x to the 1 on it, right? Which is this and this, okay? Yeah. So that's um, 2a plus b all times x, okay? Mm -hmm. And then I want things that have an x to the 0 on it, because it's basically x to the 0, okay? Yeah. And that's just going to be this and this, okay? So mm -hmm. that's going to be a minus b. 
All right. And then I look at the coefficients is, is what I look at. Okay. So I had, I had a one in front of the X, right? And then I had, mm -hmm. um, so here one X is equal to that. Right. And then I have two was equal to this, right? Mm -hmm. That makes sense so far. Sorry, it's a little, little janky what I'm doing. Wait, okay. can you do the, the last part where how they got the one and two? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, let me, let me do that. Let me do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was janky. I'm just like, that's not good. <laughs> okay, here, let me, let me write it this way. Okay. What I have here, right? I have one X, right? Yeah. Plus, I'm going to say uh, two X to the zero. Let's just say this is also X yeah. to the zero. Okay. So now I just, they, they call this, they, they, we, we call this like ordering by, by powers, by terms or something. So uh -huh. whatever coefficient is in front of x to the 1 here has to be the same coefficient in front of x to the oh. 1 over here. So that's why I say 1 is equal to 2a plus b, and mm -hmm. then 2 is equal to a minus b. Oh, okay, I see. Good? Okay. And then you have system equations. Now you can solve this, right? Just add it, right? b minus b goes away. And so I get that uh, 3 is equal to 3a, so a is equal to 1, right? Mm-hmm. Which means uh, B yeah, is equal yeah. to negative one. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because if that's two, yeah. Cool. Awesome. All right. A equals one. B equals minus one. All right. We're getting closer. Okay. So this whole thing here, this massive clusterfuck, uh, becomes one over x minus one plus or what is it? Minus one. One over two x plus one. Okay. Okay, express the, the sum of a power series by first, you express the function as the sum of a power series. Okay, so then I need to remember like how I can represent this as a power series, and I think that's because this is a geometric series. Yeah. Uh, and then, wait, wait, here's this, A equals AX. Yeah, that's another way to do it, Zone. I like that. Yeah, 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 that works too. That works too. Uh... That's, so yeah, so Zone actually comes up with a cool technique here, which I'll, I'll say real quick, um, is you don't have to go through and do this in ordering. What you can do here, Bob, is just a trick because sometimes this will get longer, like you'll get other other yeah. shit, right, which, which gets really complicated, mm -hmm. is you can set X equal to something that causes this whole thing to go away. Oh, so, yeah. so if I say X is equal to negative one half here, then this goes away. Yeah. And uh -huh. then I just have... Look, uh, I have three yeah, halves B. is equal to B, B, and then it's minus three half B times minus three halves. So that just tells you B is negative one. Yeah, Jeff. Yeah, zone. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, zone. Yeah, that's that's a that's a that's a nicer trick. Yeah, that works too. Um, okay. So now I need to remember how to represent these things as power series. Uh, I think they're geometric series, right? Uh, so some of. Uh, Geometric series equation. It's like one over one minus r. Yeah, this is it. Here we go. Bingo, bango. Yeah. Okay, so this is what it is, right? Mm -hmm. Um. Okay. Oh, uh, oh try and make it that. You make this. You want to make this kind of like look like this, and then you can rewrite it as this, and then oh, you know for a geometric series you need r to be less than one, right, in order for it to yeah. converge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, ba -ba 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 uh. What do I want to do here? Uh, I think I want to rewrite this as negative one one minus x. You can do that. As long as you put a negative here, you can you can flip the order of this, right? Um, so now in this case, I have... Um, this is negative sum from k equals 0 to infinity. a is equal to 1, right? And then it's... Yeah. Uh, and then r in this case is x, x. x to the k. That's just what it is, yeah? Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh -huh. Right, awesome. Okay. So this converges um, as long as, uh, so this converges uh, for absolute value of x, right, is less than 1, right? Mm -hmm. 
The formula totally works with r equals zero. A equals one, r equals minus. Yeah, that looks okay. Okay, cool. Um, this one's a little little dicier, I guess, right? So this is minus. I got to rewrite it to look like this. So what is what is that going to be? Yeah. That's going to be one over one minus uh, negative two x. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So now this is the sum from k equals zero to infinity of one and now x is uh negative two x to the k yeah okay. uh-huh i think we're okay i think we're okay here so far yeah cool oh thanks for the follow dude uh ba 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 uh okay so what absolute absolute value of negative two x has to be less than one i also yeah i guess i mean this alternates now already which is kind of cool um, but yeah, negative two X is less than one. So X absolute value of X has to be less than a half, right? Yeah. For this one, I believe call me out math guys. If I'm wrong, I'm pretty sure I'm, I'm pretty sure. I'm okay. If here, so the radius of convergence for this one is one. The radius of convergence for this one is one half. I think you need to pick the smaller of the two. Uh, so I think the interval of convergence is just one half. I think it's it's just minus one half to one half. Is that right? I feel like that's right. Looks right. <laughs> it says it looks right. I need my right. I need my math streamers to keep me honest. They always keep me honest here, dude. Because like sometimes I say like wrong shit. <laughs> one sec, let me just check it. Uh. We can go to Wolfram Alpha. I think I think Wolfram will actually do radius of convergence. I think you can ask it. Radius of convergence for x plus two uh, over two uh, x squared minus x minus one. Let's see if it'll do it. I wonder if it will. Uh, well, that's the whole sum. I don't want to write that. Uh, Uh, as a power series. Oh, you can do a Taylor series expansion on it, sure. Here we go. Yeah, this is what it is. Okay. So, that checks out my simple mind. Yeah, it kind of does here too. So, this is cool. So, for instance, you can ask World from Alpha to... Uh, wait, where did it go? Excuse me. Okay, you can ask it to write it as a power series. So this is what this is what you're going to get into eventually, Bob. Which is it's called Taylor expansions, which is a, a cool way to. So for instance, the 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 yellow thing here. That's what the function looks like. That's what this looks like. This looks like this yellow thing. And if I wanted to mm -hmm. approximate that as uh, and if I wanted to approximate what it was centered around here at x equals zero, it would be the sum of all these different polynomial terms. Oh. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, and yeah, yeah. do you see all these dashed lines? These are all the polynomial terms as they get higher and higher. So this is like, this is the zeroth order, first order, second order, third order, blah, 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 blah. So eventually you get to here. Yeah. Good. So they say, cool, I can write this as this is my series, which I think is, this is what we had, right? Negative one uh, minus negative two to the n, right? Mm, um, I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we, we, had, we pulled the minus out. It was negative and then it was one plus negative. And then look, they say that, right, for two times the absolute value of x is less than one. So that tells me my radius of convergence is it has to be less than a half. Because mm -hmm. this, this is like the, this is, this is the only way that the series converges to it. Yeah. Cool. That's actually a pretty cool question. Nice. So, uh, does that make, here, do you want, you want a screenshot of that probably, I'm guessing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, let's get you a screenshot. Okay, cool. All right. Nice job, Bob. Good question. Thank you. Mm -mm -mm. Bob the goat. Bob the goat. <sighs> nice. Yeah, you're welcome, dude. Nice. What's going on, Twitch? We've got 26 of y'all in the crowd. That's cool, man. I like these higher numbers. Yeah, sick. Hope you all having a good Tuesday. If you have any questions you want to go over, if you're just lurking and learning math, totally cool. 
we're going to go through all types of stuff. You saw we just did a calculus question, and then before that, I think we were doing more lower-level math, and then we'll do high school stuff. I think Ethan probably has a question of, of something in you know high school physics. We do it all. So if you ever want to learn anything math or science-wise, you can always join our Discord. It gets spammed there by the bottom bunch. Just click that link. And then we have a whole uh, channel called um, Help Screenshots. Um, it's not on this one. But yeah, there's a whole channel where like people can post all their questions. Okay, uh, Ethan, I'll do yours because uh, you've been waiting a bit, and then I'll do uh, maybe I'll do Hoseways. Hoseways looks pretty cool. Other cool, can you hear me? I can hear you, dude. What's up, dude? Let's do it. Okay, yeah, it's a math question. It, the teacher will ask something similar to that in the test in the test tomorrow. So oh, we're doing we're doing areas of sectors. Maybe... That's my that was my working, which was not really a good one. Okay. Cool. The shot put area of Marion Jones yeah, Stadium um, is formed by the sectors of two circles with a center of C. The area of the sector. Uh, wait, what's the, what's the question? What are they asking for? Oh wait, hold on. Let me let me find the paper. Hold on. Oof, man. Oh yes, I, I see the question. Are they asking for this? It's. Yes, to calculate the area of the shader region. Give your answer correct to two significant figures. Okay. And they say the the, the area of this is 1.2. Right? Apparently. C okay. to D to G. Yeah, it's all right. So they say this is 1.2. Okay. All right. I think the general strat here, Ethan, that you're going to want to do is... Um, what's up? Don't we need the formula for area of a sector? Yes. Um, yeah. What what do you what's your equation for it? I I know mine. Mine is area is equal to I don't know degrees over three sixty times pi r squared. Is that what they give you? Hold area on. of a sector. Let me, let me try to find it. Or you can do radian over two pi times pi r squared, which I guess these count these count these these cancel. Sorry, it's still theta. Sorry. So that's theta r squared over 2. I believe. Yeah. Depends whether your angle's in uh, radians or degrees. Hold on. Just trying to find it. Yeah, I think you're right. Not your friend. I think you're right. For the area of sector, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, for area of sector, it's... Um, Degree over 360 pi r squared. Yeah, 360 pi r squared. Jeff says one one point two times five squared by congruence. Ooh, I like this. There's a con there's a congruence thing here, man. Oh, okay. Let's see. Uh, yeah, I think would yeah, I think Jeff has something about like similar sectors. I think is how it's gonna work because the the cool thing here, Ethan, is that these both span the same amount of angle. Do you understand that? You understand that like the the angle from D to G here is the same angle spanned from E to F. I did not know that. Okay. Yeah. So this this is where he's he's coming at. But yeah, it's actually kind of cool. Yeah. Okay. So the area of this sector, right? Let's say the the area of of the of the pink sector, right, which is equal to one point two. That's equal to some angle, right, divided by three sixty times pi times uh. Radius squared, right? Which I'm is two, two squared. squared right? Two squared, yeah. Uh, okay. All right. Wait, two squared is the radius? Yeah, well, two two is the radius, and then it's pi r squared. So it's two squared. Yeah, Why I think the only thing... this? All right. Because radius is two. I think the only issue, issue is, uh, Jeff, I think they want this. So eventually we're going to have to take this whole thing and subtract it from that. It's okay. It's a minor mistake. Minor, minor thing. Okay. So that's the area of the 1.21, 1 right? Okay. So now let's 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 think about the area of the big one, like the green one. Okay, so that area, right, which we don't know, is equal to the same theta over 360, right, times pi times 10 squared. Where did you get the 10 from now? Because now the radius is 10. It's the big, the big sector. Yeah, exactly. Minus one. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, I, thought we, I thought we only used the two square. We use the two square to find the area of the pink one, right? This part right here. 
But then I'm yes. but now but now but now I'm finding the area of the whole thing, the green thing, right? The big sector. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes, I see that. Okay. That's what that's what this green one is, okay? And then eventually if we want to find the in between, right? We're gonna do the green part so minus green. minus the pink part. Oh, okay, I see. I, right, I, I know that. I know that. You got that? Okay, cool. All right, so then let let's do this, right? Okay, so. Uh, so, do we, so do we play around with the? Do we play around the, with the equation and make something the subject of the formula? Yes. So if we look at this, right, Ethan, what's mi missing in both of these things? What am I missing? Well, you're missing the angle, obviously. I'm missing the angle. Good. Yeah, theta, theta. Yeah. I don't know theta here. I don't know theta here. Okay. But I do know that this is equal to 1.2, right? And then this is equal to some sort of area. So we could solve for the angle here, Ethan. We could, right? We just need to get everything on one side, right? Yeah. So here we'll do. It. So this is this is the uh, this is the the brute force way to do it, and then I'll show Jeff's way of just doing it really quickly. All right. But yeah. So you can do 1.2. Well, I'd rather you, you multiply uh, it by 360 both sides. Yeah, we're going to multiply by 360 on both sides, right? That's what I'm doing here. And then I'm going to divide by 4 pi, right? And that's going to be equal to theta. What the? You didn't even show the process. I, I don't understand it so easily there. Okay, that's all right, though. All right. 1.2 times 360 is equal to theta pi times 2 squared, right? Yes. Good so far? And then we can take all of this, Ethan, right? And we can just divide it underneath, right? Oh, I can't fucking move it, whatever. All right, so this would be 4 pi. Does that make sense? All right. Okay, so now you can yeah. solve for what theta is, right? What, what do I get if I'm solving for theta now? Um, hold on. Yeah, like theta 4.37. 30.37, okay. Thirty-four point twenty-eight. Okay, thirty-four point twenty-eight. I, I I trust you. All right. So okay, that equals. Well, that actually seems really big. Is that right? Right. Oh yeah, because we're in degrees. We're in degrees. Uh, Sorry. Thirty-four point twenty-eight. No, I I agree with you. I agree with you. That's okay. Thirty-eight. It's thirty-eight. Thirty-eight. Three. Oh, thirty-eight. Okay. Here we'll just one second. One point two times three sixty divided by four pi. Uh, yeah, th wait, wait, 34.38, right? Yeah, since you're just running off. Good, I mean, that's okay. okay. That's okay. Okay, cool. So that that's what I know, right? That's theta, and now I can use that, right, Ethan, to plug that into my theta here to figure out the area of the green the green space. Well, <laughs> Jeff with all the digits. Don't we use the area of the segment here? Yeah, we're going to figure it out, which we know is this, right? But now, now I can Area figure out. Now I already know what theta is, right? I have thirty-four point three eight over three sixty is equal to pi times. Uh, sorry, it's not equal to. Sorry, times pi times ten squared, right? Wait, hold on. Say that again. I plug this, Ethan, into this to get me this. All right. Okay. So now you now you can now you can do that math, right? I can do that. Divided by three sixty. Thirty. Right? It's using thirty, I think. Times Wait. pi. Yeah, it's yeah, it's thirty. Nice. Very good. Okay, cool. So good. That's thirty, right? Okay. Yes. So that that's the area of the green. Remember that one point two is equal to the area. Of this, right? Of the of the pink. Okay. What? So what's the last step? So don't we subtract the bo both of them? Yeah. What do you get? Hold on. You get four point three a, right? No, no, no. Thirty minus one point two. Oh, wait. I, I, 30, see, the thirty four point three eight, Ethan, that was the angle. That was theta. That was not the area. Oh. Okay. Well that gives you twenty eight point eight, which Good. should be twenty nine. Good. Twenty nine. Works out. Nice. Good job, dude.
Alright, let's see song. Will it be that easy? What? Yeah. Yeah, it's not that bad. So can you, so you can't, can you recap what you, what you, all you did? Yeah, so, um, what I did was I set out what the equations were for the sectors, right? I, I made equations for both, right? And then, uh, I solved for the angle theta, right? Using the area for the pink sector, right? For the, for the, for the 1.2. And then once I had theta, I used that to figure out the area for the green sector, right? Which is the whole thing. And then I subtracted the two. So basically, we had to find a, the angle and then substitute it into the other one. That's yes. what we're doing? Yes. That's one way to do it. One way to do it. Yeah. Nice. Ugh. Numbers are exhausting. Really? I agree, Casey. They were. I'm exhausted. Anyways, yeah. I, I, I'm going to. Thanks for the help. You're oh, welcome, dude. I hope I pass them out that time. I you hope know, you pass. You know what they'll have? What are they gonna have? They're gonna have. Hold on. They have the outline. They're gonna have stuff related to arcling area of sector and segments. Okay. Nice. Well, that's what we just did. They also have changed. They also have changed the subject of the. Ethan, what's up? What happened to his mic? Josue, what's up? You want to do your question? Yeah, so yeah. This is a lot easier, Josue. Jesus, it's so much easier than last time. Yeah, that's a good yeah, what? Yeah, so, um... yeah, what's up, Ethan? Yeah, I told you the outline already, right? Did you get it all? Yes. So I really do hope it will be easy. I think it will be. It'll be good. Nice. Okay, but I gotta go on. Good luck, dude. Good luck, man. Casey says, was also telling a gamer streamer about this channel because she's the one I drew a comic goofed off with in a math class back in the day. And then we both got bad at math as a result. <laughs> That's okay, Casey. Who's the streamer, by the way? I know I know a couple streamers. I, I know this one this I met this one uh streamer at a uh uh at like a dinner thing I was at. It was for like the Grammys. Well, this is me, we don't need to watch me. Uh her name is Tina. Tina Kitten. This is her. She's pretty big, actually. Yeah, she's almost got like two two million followers. We yeah. Dare. But I guess she plays a lot of like Minecraft and stuff. Yeah. But yeah, I met her at a. It was like a, a Grammy's dinner or something. It was kind of cool. I told her I can help out her students. Like she's got to have a bunch of students that that play Minecraft. Like if they play Minecraft, they must be students. And I said like, yo, if any of your Minecraft students need help, <laughs> let me know. I can help them out. Uh, Ryu Tasume, but is she gonna be streaming on Twitch? That's cool. Well, check her out. Ryu Tasume. Uh, Ryu Tasume. Oh, she's live right now. That's cool. We'll see. Wow. No, 1K's pretty big. Right, good for her. She likes gaming, comics, movies, general geekery. That's fun. Hey, look, and there, there's your, your Twitter and Twitch. Oh, that's so fun. You're one of are you one of the artists, Casey? That's really cool. You do the emote art. Yeah, streaming for fun's always fun. She likes RPGs and action adventures. Cool. Nice. I'll give her a follow. Um Okay, Josue says give me a minute. Cool. You let me know when you're ready, Josue. We'll do this one. That's a good question. What do you use to draw your emotes, Casey? Use uh like Illustrator or All right, ready. <laughs> yeah. All right. What are we uh, Is this a math question? This looks like a math question, not a physics question. Well, I guess it kind of is. Uh it's from the physics. Okay. This is not nearly as bad as last time was. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry. Okay. A fly is walking on a vertical wall, walks 1 meter at an angle of 30 degrees below, and then walks 2 meters at an angle 45 above the horizontal. What is the magnitude of the final displacement? Okay, cool. Where's the final displacement on this one? This is like we have two Yeah, we have like two cool. vectors here. Do you see how we have a vector going this way and then we have another vector going this way? Yeah. The displacement is is what's called the resultant vector, which is this. This is called like the displacement. Okay. If you wanted to calculate the distance that the fly traveled, it technically traveled three meters, right? Because it went one meter here and then two meters here. That would be mm -hmm. called the distance. Okay. But displacement only cares about 
how far you are when you end from where you started. It doesn't care where you went in between. Like, the fly could have done, like, all of this. Like, it could have gone fucking crazy. <laughs> but if it ends here, this is always still just going to be the displacement. Oh, Photoshop. Cool. I have a Wacom tablet, Casey. I, I, need, to, I need to do some more drawing. <laughs> I like the hand draw a little bit. Okay. Uh, so here's a good question here, Josue. Uh, the displacement, do you think it's going to be more or less than three meters? <laughs> Well, this is like a 50-50. I can either get it wrong. <laughs> Just think about it. Just think about it. Just think about it. Okay. Is it going to be quicker for you to go straight there or like kind of go the long way? No, straight there. Straight there. All oh, right. so it's going to be shorter. It's going to be shorter. Yeah. This is what they call like, you know, like as, as the crow flies. So for instance, right, you know, when you live on, have you ever heard that term like as the crow flies? No, that's the first time. Oh, okay. Yeah. So a lot of times in like, you know, in maps, you know, when you have to go from one place to another place, um, you have to like take streets and whatnot, right? And it becomes kind of uh -huh. difficult because you have to go around things in order to get places. Yeah. That's an example of like distance. Displacement would be if you were a bird and you could just like s oh, flap God. your wings and just go straight there. That's what they call as the crow flies. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. So, um, to get this, right, what we need is we, we're going to call this initial position 0, 0, right? We agree that we probably start at 0, 0. And then to find the displacement, I need what's called, like, X final, Y final. Okay? Mm. Good. Now, the way to do this is to break up each one of these legs that we're going into components. Have you heard that before, components? Yeah. Good. So we're going to have uh, a Y component here and an X component here. Do you know how to figure out what those components are going to be? Is this going to use like some trigonometry? Yeah, it's going to use trig. Maybe. Yeah, it's definitely okay. going to use trig. Uh, I, I don't think it is a right angle because it's, it's a 30 and a 40. Maybe it is. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. Uh, okay. So yeah, what, what trigger are we going to figure out the X? Oh, wait, if that's 30 degrees, mm -hmm. wouldn't that make this, like, corner 30 degrees? That would make this technically 60. Because this makes oh, a right angle. Yeah. No. The other way to do that, if that's confusing for you, and I'll show you, like, okay, so we could do 60, right? The other way I could do is I could, I could say that this is X and this is Y. Okay, and you're going to see that we, we would get the same answer. So if I used this as my angle, what would the X component be? Would it just be V1? No, not just one. Mm -hmm. So let's think about the triangle, right? This is the hypotenuse, right? Okay. Can so use the equation for it? Yeah, let's use an equation. Let, let's use like, have you heard of Sokotoa? Sokotoa, right? Yeah. Okay. Right. So sine, so sine of an angle, right, is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse, right? And cosine yeah. of an angle is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So if we look at this 60 degree angle, right, what is the X going to be? Opposite, adjacent. If you're looking at it through 60 degrees. Mm-hmm. Like Let's, uh, let's call that opposite. X is opposite. Good. So here, we could say sine of 60 degrees, right, is equal to the opposite, which is X, over the hypotenuse, which is just 1. Okay? Right. So this is just sine of 60 degrees is equal to X. If you wanted to use the 30 degree one, what would it be? Let's say we, let's say we use this triangle instead. Let's see. That'll be 30 over 1. Wait, no, no, no. no. Over one. It would be y over 1. That would, that would be the sine of 30, right? But if I wanted to find x, right, I would say the cosine of 30 degrees. Oh, hey. Right? Because now this is the adjacent. Okay? Both ways are correct. Okay? I'll show you why. This is actually a kind of a cool trick thing. Okay? 
But so, okay, watch. If I do the sine of 60, right? See how I got that? That 0.86 thing, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and then let's do the cosine of 30. I get the same number, right? 0 0.86. 0 0.866, I guess, yeah. Okay. See how you get both? You get the same? Mm -hmm. Cool. This is technically what's this is called the square root of three over two. Is what this is. You'll you'll learn that if you do the unit circle enough, right? Okay, cool. All right. So enough of that, right? So we know right here that this, right, this first component. Let's just call this x one. X one is equal to the square root of three over two, and it's going to the right, so it's positive. Okay. How can we figure out what y one is though? How do we figure out what the y component is? Adjacent hypotenuse. So what would it be? You have you have to write out the trig thing. You have to say blank of blank is blank over blank. That's how that's how you have to write it. It's going so to be you, cosine. Good. So cosine of sixty is equal to the adjacent, which is y over the hypotenuse one, or yeah. y is just equal to the cosine of sixty. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, and the cosine of 60 is just one half. Okay, so this is just one half. However, okay, wh which way is it going though? This one half, is it, is it up or down? Up down. It down. Would be negative. Negative, good, okay, awesome, all right. Close to the last step. Let's do this blue one right here. Okay. Let's try to find the Y and let's try to find the X. Okay. What are we gonna do? Yeah, let's do. Let's call it x two. Let's call it y two. So set it up. Yeah. You got it. We got an angle here. Which trig function can I use? I can technically use either one. I'll I'll tell you why. But yeah. sine. Well, for x, you can use sine. Bang. Well, you you would really want to use cosine, is what you say. You would say the cosine of forty five degrees is equal oh, to the the adjacent x over hypotenuse. Okay. Sine would be y. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. The important thing here, though, uh, Jose, do you see how this is forty five degrees? This is ninety. Because this is the x and the y. The x and the y axis are always 90 degrees to each other. Okay, This is also 45. What type of special triangle is this? A right triangle. It's a right triangle, but it's even more than just a right triangle. It's like a super special triangle. What happens if the angles are the same on two sides of the triangle? Do you know about the sides? Yes, Bob. Uh, I remember you teaching me this. Oh. It's called an isosceles. This is an isosceles triangle. Isosceles. Okay. Isosceles. If the angles are the same, then the sides are the same. Okay? So once you figure um, out what X is here, you, you, you can just skip right ahead and just get Y. Because they're the same thing. Yeah. Okay. okay. So in this case, right, X is equal to 2 times the cosine of 45 degrees. And the cosine of 45 degrees is the square root of 2 over 2. So this is 2 times the square root of 2 over 2, which is just equal to the square root of 2. Okay? And then, because this is isosceles, y is also going to be the square root of 2 for here and here. Okay? Make sense? Yep. Okay. Final thing is to get our displacement vector, okay, which is going to have an x-coordinate of uh, x1 plus x2, okay? And then a y-coordinate of y1 plus y2, okay? Does that make sense? So we add the x-coordinate from here, Jose, with the x-coordinate of here to get, like, the super x-coordinate of the purple one. All right. Okay. Okay. 
So that's going to be the square root of 3 over 2 plus the square root of 2, which is uh, not really the nicest number, but it's okay. And then for this one, right, it's negative 1 half plus the square root of 2. Okay? So if we do that, what? We get square root of 3, cool, divided by 2 plus the square root of 2. That gets me 2.28. And then my y coordinate is negative 1 half plus the square root of 2. Okay, and that gets me 0.914. All right? So now mm -hmm. I know I know my x coordinate, my y coordinate, okay? For my for my final position, all right? The last step is to figure out the displacement. I need to figure out how long the distance the distance between these two points, between 0 0 and between this, okay? So this is where you can start using the Pythagorean theorem, okay? Because now, right, I know I have a final vector, which is this purple one, right? That travels uh, 2.28 in the x direction and 0.914 in the y direction. How do I figure out this, the total distance it goes? Uh, a, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, and then you plug yeah. in a and b. Like Good. Two sides, and then we just have for C, right? Good. Yes. Yeah. So we do two point two eight squared, right? Plus point nine one four squared, and then we square root it. Okay. And that gets us a final answer of two point four six. Okay. And that's and that's the distance, right? And that's that's the distance. And what answer choice is that? Let's see. Yes, very good. Now, yeah, I am curious if this if, if this is a he was he was someone was asking is this a ninety degree angle uh between between this one and this one uh was it one sec I'm, I'm actually kind of curious for that uh if this is forty five uh this must be sixty right so no it's not this is one hundred and five right Jeff. Yeah, so no. Unfortunately not. Yeah. All good. Yeah, and if they wanted you to find the angle here, this is the other thing they can ask you, Josue. They can ask you to figure out what this angle is. Do you know how to figure that out? Uh, Sokotoa. Right. Yeah. So how would you do that? How do you Sokotoa with this? Diagram, definitely not scale. Can't you just use one of the Sokotoas and then... Mm-hmm. Yeah, use one. I don't care. Pick one. I'm gonna show you how it works. Just pick one. Sign is off the sale Cool. I like that. Let's use sine. So sine of theta is equal to the opposite 0.914 over the hypotenuse, 2.46. Okay? So that's equal to some number. So if we do this, sorry, uh I do 0.94 divided by that answer, right? Get, gets me 0.383, okay? But then how do I figure out the angle? You may not know this. Yeah, like how do how do I get this sign? How do I strip this sign off? I want to get rid of it. How do I how do I strip it off? Arc sign? Good, arc sign. Yeah. So you take the sign inverse of both sides is what you do. Okay? Because then this goes yeah. away. And you're just left with theta is equal to the arc sine of 0.383. Which, let's see what that is, actually. I'm curious. That's going to be 22.5 degrees. Cool. 5 degrees. Nice. Uh, monkey, no, I didn't ping you. Oh, cool. Does that make more sense, Josue? Yeah? Yeah, it's just the trig. Yeah, the trig is, is something you gotta get used to, especially in physics, dude. There's a lot of trig in physics. A lot oh. of, like, people ask me, like, why, why the hell do I learn all this geometry stuff and whatnot? It's because of this. Like, you have to, yeah. 
you have to be able to draw diagrams. You got to be able to um, figure out what the angles are, especially when we start doing vectors like angle of uh, inclination, declination, all that stuff. Yeah, it's all related. But cool. Awesome. There you go. Good job, Jose. Yeah, let me know. Uh, you know, if you got more questions for your final coming up on Saturday, especially if those other ones which were weird. Like, let's help you out with them. Cool. Mm -hmm. well, okay. My physics final tomorrow. I oh, okay. The math one. Oh, okay. Well, good luck on the physics, man. Good luck. Let me, yeah. you know, you can always DM me something last minute if you're like, I don't know how to get, I don't know how to do this, and I, I can usually send something back pretty quick. Okay. Cool. All right. Nice. Cool. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. What do we got up? I got, I got a couple people here. Is Noise still here? Sorry, Noise. Noise, are you still here? It's late for Sir Noise. It's probably like 3 a.m. for this guy. One second. Let me see. Noise, Noise, baby. You, I solved your one. That's nice. <laughs> uh, oh, not your friend. Did you want? Yeah, let's do yours. Yours is up. Here, not your friend. You're here. You're not at school yet? Not your friend? I thought I thought you have to like go to school by now. Okay, here. Let's do yours. Okay. An incomplete table uh, of values prepared to draw a graph of the function is given below. Find the value of y when x is equal to negative 2. Oh, that's fun. I think you know how to do this. Exam finished. Nice. How'd your exam go? Okay, equity. Yeah, I'll do yours next. Oh, you're at home until O levels. Okay, cool. All right. So this is pretty simple, right? Not your friend? We just plug in negative 2 here for x. And this is actually cool. This is very cool. This is what we were talking about earlier at the very beginning of today. Like, this is what I love happens. Like, the very beginning when I was teaching uh, Obama, like, how quadratics work and how you can graph things, right, like like this, this is exactly what we're doing right now. We're doing the same thing. Okay? This this is, yeah, this is the x minus h plus k form for a, for a parabola. So yeah, minus two, right, is just going to make this whole thing zero. And so you're just left with negative five. So that's not too bad. Okay. Uh, using a graph, I assume you know how to graph. That's okay. Uh, oh, but there's, oh, there's some, oh, yeah, that's okay. That's okay. Well, we could graph that. Using the graph, write the coordinates of the turning point. Write the interval of the values for which x is less than or equal to negative two. Find the roots of the equation when it's equal to five. I like these. These are all good. Um, so I think the turning point is always, this is always just the vertex is what this is, not your friend. So when you have something that's in this form, the vertex is at uh, h comma k. All right. What is h comma k for this function? What's the vertex for it? Uh, can you teach me how to write the a plus b, b plus c in a plus b plus b by looking at the graph? Oh, I see. Uh, are you saying like how to go from vertex form? Uh, sorry, you're, you're, yeah, you're saying going from intercept form to vertex form is what it is, right? Yeah. Uh, Okay, looking at the graph, um, yeah, the issue is it's going to be like the square root of five is what it's going to be. Yeah, 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 okay. Okay, if you have a graph that looks something like this, right, which has like a point here and a point here, let's just say this is, for instance, x1, and then this is x2, okay? Then And then you, you need a third point. You, you need a third point to figure this out, though. You need a third one. Uh, this is always going to be y is equal to a times x minus x1 times uh, x minus x2, I think. Yeah. Mm, well, wait. No, no, no. Sorry, 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 sorry. Uh, no, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, it's this. And then in order to figure out A, you, you have to... So these these are the roots. These are the roots. But then in order to figure out A, you need to plug in... So to figure out... 
you need to plug in a value uh, for these two things, and then for also that, and then you solve for it. Uh, from the one given in the question. Okay, yeah, that's not bad. Okay, yeah, yeah, sure, 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 sure. Okay, so we have this. So I have y is equal to x plus 2 squared minus 5, right? So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to expand this. So this is going to be y is equal to x squared plus 4x plus 4 minus 5, okay? Which is the same thing as uh, x squared plus 4x minus 1. Does that make sense so, so far? Not your friend? How I took this and then I turned it into this? Okay, cool. Uh, all right, and if you want to factor this now, okay, this is a little tricky, right? Because this doesn't factor very nicely. Uh, this is where you have to use the quadratic equation, right? Which is, uh, so when you're writing the factors like this, okay, these are the things that when you plug in X, you're going to end up getting zero for it. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to solve this. I'm going to say zero is equal to X squared plus 4X minus 1, okay? And I'm going to solve for it. So X is equal to negative B, so that's going to be negative 4 plus or minus the square root of B squared, which is 16, minus 4AC. So minus 4 times 1 times negative 1, all over 2A, okay? So um, now I know, right? That, what is this? This is negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 12, right? Or no, sorry, of 20. My bad, sorry. So because 4 times minus 4 is negative 4, negative is positive, so now it's 20, good, over 2. So it's negative 4 plus or minus, and then 20 breaks out into 2 and 10 and then 2 and 5. So this is plus or minus 2 root 5 all over 2, Okay. Um, so what I get, so if I divide this out, I get negative two plus or minus the square root of five. Okay. That's cool. Uh-huh. Write down the roots from the equation. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh! I'm asking if they give us this form to draw the graph, and then by looking at the graph, write the equation in a a. How do you do that? Yeah, yeah you just find the vertex. Okay. Uh, so let's say this, let's say they do this. Say they give you x plus five, x plus two. I guess is equal to y. Is that what they're saying? Okay. I know this is going to have roots then at minus 5 and at minus 2, right? Because if I plug in minus 5 here, this goes to 0. If I plug in negative 2, this goes to 0. Okay? Uh, then I assume, right, that it's concave up uh, because everything's positive here, right? So that's going to look something like this. Okay? Yeah, okay, so the x-coordinate of the vertex is always going to be halfway in between these roots. So if I have a root here at minus 5 and minus 2, uh, the halfway point is going to be negative 3.5. Yeah, you can do that. You can do the b over 2a, f of, yeah, but, yeah, whatever, yeah. Basically, you, you find the average of these two, right? The average is, right, minus 5 plus negative 2 all over 2. So it's negative 7 over 2. So negative 3 halves. That's the x-coordinate of your vertex. All right. Uh, then to find the y coordinate, you just plug this back in for x. Okay. So this is the the x vertex. And so if I plug it back in, right, I get negative three point five plus five times negative three point five plus two is equal to y. So that gets me uh, one point five times negative one point five. Right. So that's going to be equal to negative two point two five. So this is now the y coordinate. Uh, this is the y vertex. So now, if you wanted to write it out, right, this would be 
uh, y is equal to, I don't think we know this yet. So it's a, right? And then it's going to be x minus h, so x plus 3.5 uh, pl uh, plus k, which is then minus 2.25, right? You have to do it by looking at the graph, yeah. If you look at the graph here, then yeah. This is your this is your h comma k, right? So h comma k is the vertex, okay? That's the h, that's that, okay? Uh, but then you have to determine what this is, I think. Uh, which means you have to plug in, again, one of these values and make sure that it's zero. Yeah, exactly, yeah. So, in this case, now, now it, the problem is, like, I don't know what the multiplier is on this, okay? It would be easier to just square this out and then do completing the square to, to figure out what it is. That would be the easiest way, honestly, to do this. Uh, but let's just check. Maybe I'm crazy here, okay? So, if I put in um, negative 2 in for x, okay? Now I get y is equal to a times negative 1.5 minus 2.25, okay? So, and that has to equal to zero. So if I move that over, 2.25 is equal to a times negative 1.5, right? So I get that uh, a must equal to 1.5. So this just becomes 1.5 here. And that would be, that would be your form. Does that make more sense, not your friend? Ugh. Yeah? Okay, cool. Nice. Good job. <laughs> Lots of math today. A lot of stuff on that one. Yes, equity. We'll do yours right now. Hello, Tatago. I just wanted to say one thing. What's, your, what's up, Ethan? What do you want to say, dude? Um, do you know how to change subject to formulas? Uh, I don't know what that means. Like, um, Ugh. they'll give you a formula, and then they'll want you to make, like, this variable the subject of the formula. Oh, you mean just rearranging the equation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know yeah, you play around with it. Yeah. Apparently, there's so some 30. term called factorize. Apparently, yeah. Apparently, there's some term called factorization. I know. You're talking about if you have, like, a, like... I don't know, x plus y is equal to 3, and then they want this to be the subject of the formula. So you get is x it, plus y is that, equal to 3 over a, and then y is equal to 3 over a minus x. That's where it comes from. See, see how, just just tell me how you're doing that. Like, like how? How's that possible? How's it possible? Oh, well, I mean... How do you do it? Or how do you do it? What's the work that you do? Anytime I see the, the variable I'm trying to isolate, look at what's happening furthest away from it and do the opposite. So A is the furthest away from Y and it's multiplying. That's why I divided it on both sides. And then X is adding to it. That's why I subtracted it. And then you're left with just the variable. That's how it works. Okay. Or you uh, could subtract Y on both sides and bring and subtract 3 on the other side and then you still get it? Or is that yeah. wrong? Uh, yeah. The, the order does kind of matter. What is Jeff saying here, dog? What is he saying? <laughs> y equals f of x. X equals g of x. Y equals f of x. X equals g of y. Oh no! Do it for x cubed plus x plus one. Y is an example, please. Yeah. What does he want to do? But x. They won't. They won't give me square roots or cube roots. No. X of g of y. G Jeff, are you asking me to solve that for x? Is that what you're doing? Oh, you're joking. Ignore that. <laughs> okay, it's fine. I was like, wait a minute. That, that's a weird function. It's like a cubic thing. What? You're like messing with me, dude. It's all good. All right. Let me see what equ Equity's question is. E Equity, what's uh, what's going on here, dude? E Equity's got this question. Um, uh, so Equity says, hey, Gold, I got a quick question about AP Human Geography. Ooh, I've never taken AP Human Geography, but okay. Maybe we got some AP Human Geography people in the, in the crowd. Um... And he says, I don't understand. A, B, C, and E are not renewable sources, but fishing isn't a renewable energy source, so I'm confused. Uh, which of the following is considered a renewable energy source? 
Uh, definitely not coal. <laughs> Uh, natural gas? Not really. Wait, why is fishing not renewable? We can always make more fish. Yes, dude. Yes, let's let's farm the fish, dude. Let's let's be fish wranglers. <laughs> it's not an energy source. I mean, what if I burn the fish, though, man? I can burn the fish, right? <laughs> uh, I mean. Yeah. This is where it's like, you know, it's semantics, man. Like, how the fuck can we farm fish? This ain't Minecraft. I don't know what tar sands are. Yeah. Okay, oil is not renewable. We know that. Coal is not renewable. I'm pretty sure natural gas is not renewable either. Let's look at what tar sands are. Okay. Sand, clay, water, and bitumen. That's cool. These things. I don't think these are renewable either. Bro, I think it's fish, dude. <laughs> I swear I think it's fish. <laughs> uh, or maybe... Okay, maybe this is. Uh, oh, okay. Wait, wait, wait. Or, or, wait, wait. This is them getting oil reserves. Yeah, no, no, no. This is them taking out oil. I, I hate to say I think it's fish. Bitumen forms naturally. I agree. Um, but it's not renewable. The problem is, like, you're still using it, no? Wait, one second. One second. Let's just Google it. Okay. Are tar sands renewable? I didn't know what they were today. Uh, so... Two other less used source of... So, fossil fuels, I guess, are all non-renewable. Are oil shales and tar sands... Yeah, so yeah, they're still called non-renewable. Yeah. Yes. Okay, yeah, you're wondering, you're wondering why is it fish? Why is fishing renewable? Uh, be Everything is renewable over time. Yeah, eventually the dinosaurs, eventually we will die and turn into oil. Uh, or, you know, rock and stuff will eventually degrade into coal. What's up, Penn Center? Uh... But, yeah, I, I think fishing is because um, you can always reproduce more fish, right? Fish reproduce. They, they are renewable. To, they're, they're more renewable than these other things. Like, creating more natural gas, creating more oil, creating more coal, creating more tar sands. These things take millions of years to happen. Um, they're, not hap they're not getting renewed anytime soon. If I need to make more fish, you know, I just give some goldfish some more food or something and just let them go reproduce. Like, it, it can happen. Uh, it, it is an energy source in the case of, like, food. Like, food is energy, right? That's what I think of. Like, you know, we food is energy that we need to burn calories to do things. Just not necessarily energy for a car, right? And this is a human geography class, right? So, uh, I agree, but fishing isn't an energy source. Well, is that the wrong answer? So, here's my question. What's the correct answer, equity? <laughs> I believe it's fishing. Renewable natural gas, bro. It, that's a joke, isn't it? Ugh. Okay, it's gaseous product, the decomposition of organic matter. Okay, it didn't say. Okay. I, dude, I thought renewable natural gas was kind of like some, you know, conspiracy theory they just came up with to, to make it sound nice. But I didn't know if it was actually renewable. Okay. Yes. I guess it is more renewable than regular natural gas. Yeah, so basically they're taking the methane stuff and extracting it from from it yeah my farts can save the planet yes <sighs> it comes from organic waste yeah okay so it's like composting sure okay his natural gas renewable but see here they say it's 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 not considered renewable 
because it comes from a depleting source that cannot be replenished over time. I mean, technically, solar comes from a depleting source. Like, the sun is depleting. Right? <laughs> I think everyone else is going to say it's non-renewable. I thought renewable natural gas was kind of like uh, a conspiracy theory that, that the oil and energy sector tried to use to, like, claim it was clean. You know, like, clean coal? You guys heard of, like, clean coal? Like, there's no such thing as clean coal, right? But, yeah. They, 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 they capture the carbon emission and then they put it back down on the rock or something. Like, it's, it's not really... Like, Trump is the one that says, like, clean coal, dude. Like, it's not really real. Yeah, I, yeah, geography, bad definitions. Yeah. It's okay, equity. Yeah. Kind of a weird question. Uh-huh. But okay, I'll count it. It's, 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 it's at least a question. Yes. Uh, nice. Did I give you weekly credit for this week? Yeah, I did. Good. Okay. Let's see. Who else do I got? Uh, Taco Cat, you wanted to go last? You got the same interest. Dude, the, what, is this rupees, dude? What are we doing here with, with this? You're here? Okay, okay, Taco, let's do it. Okay. A person invested in all RS. I think this is rupees, which I think is Indian. Uh, at 4%, 6%, 8% annual si simple interest. At the end of the year, he got the same interest in all three cases. What was the men money invested at 4%? Oh, that's kind of cool. Okay. Um, at the end of the year, he got the same interest in all three cases. How? Oh, okay. Thank you, Jeff. Yeah, sorry. The, the English on this is, is weird. So they, they should say in total. Yeah, this is what they should say. So he had a total of 2,600 rupees that he invested at different percentages. Uh, yes. Yes. Okay, good. Yeah, okay. So yes, X plus Y plus, sorry, yeah, the English is not the best on this question. This is 2,600. Good. And then um, he got the same interest in all three cases, which is kind of cool. So interest, right, is always going to be the percentage times the amount you invested. And the, these are this is the amount you invested. We call this the principal. Okay. So I know that 0.04 times X must equal 0.06 times Y, which must equal 0.08 times Z. Yeah, very good. Okay. Um, I feel like I need a third equation here, right? Yeah, what's the third equation I need? Uh, you have two equations in the second. No, you have two equations in the second line. Oh, I do. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, sorry. This is not one equation. This is two. <laughs> yes. Okay. Thank you, dude. <coughs> sorry. I'm um, I'm hitting my 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 uh, my max. Uh, all right. So we're looking we're looking for x. I'm so solve for x. Solve for x. Okay. So uh, x is equal to, or well, let's let's write out all the other things in terms of that. Okay. So if I just look at these two equations, monkey, right? So if I say six over one hundred y is equal to four over one hundred x, okay. Uh, that means that y is equal to a hundred times six all over a hundred times four x. So all I did is I I moved this up top and I put this down bottom. Okay. This cancels, and I just get 3 halves x, okay? So y is equal to 3 halves x. Cool. Let's do z. So again, so now I have 8 over 100 z is equal to 4 over 100 x. So z is equal to uh, 8 over 4, which is equal to 2, uh, 2 x. Oh, wait, no, 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 sorry. Uh, 4 over 8, 4 over 8, sorry, my bad. 4 over 8, which is equal to 1 over 2x. 
did I mess that up? Did I mess that up, dude? I did. Sorry, my bad. Thank you, Pen. Yeah, sorry. Yes, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Two thirds. Let me make sure this is right. Sorry, sorry. What am I doing here, dude? Yeah, four over six. Okay, and then Z is equal to four over eight. Yeah. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah, the fractions are better. Okay. So okay, so that's y, that's z. So then x plus y plus z is equal to 2600. So y was 2 thirds x, so x plus 2 thirds x plus 1 half x is equal to 200. Uh, we got to have the same denominators on everything, so that's going to be 6. So I'm going to say 6 over 6. We're going to say 4 over 6. And then we're going to say 3 over 6. Uh, is equal to 2600. So 6 plus 4, so that's 13 over 6. X is equal to 2600. Uh, multiply it out. X is equal to 2600 times 6 over 13. 2600 over 13 is 200? 200 times 6. So it's equal to 1200 rupees. Nice. Wait, did I get it wrong? Did I get it wrong, guys? Sorry. No, it's 2600, right? Yeah, they add up to 2600. Yes. That's not the final answer? Okay. What is the, what is the money invested? Is it not? Is it not? Not 1200? Pen Center. You playing with me, dude? <laughs> yeah, I think it's just twelve hundred. Twelve hundred is the interest. No, 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 no. Twelve hundred is the amount invested. Need to find out the interest on twelve hundred at four percent. Do I? No, no, no. I just need to figure out this. I think, yeah, how we set it up, right? So this plus this plus this. Yeah, that's how much. This was the interest. The interest was 0 0.04 times the amount invested. Yeah. Oh, thanks for the follow number. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it's just 1,200. Yeah. I believe so. You let me know if I'm, I'm wrong, Penn Center. I think I'm wrong. Uh, yeah, if I wanted to figure out how much was invested in the other ones, right, uh, Y would be two thirds of that, right? So, um, so two thirds of that would be, uh, 800. So 800 was invested at this amount. So we had 800 here, 1200 here, right? And then Z would be a half of it. So that would be 600. So let's just make sure that's right, right? Look. Does this all add up to 2,600? It does. Yeah, it adds up to that, right? And then look at the interest, right? 4% of 1,200, right? That's 48 bucks. 6% of 800, also 48 bucks. 8% of 600, also 48 bucks. Same amount of interest in all three cases. The money invested was 1,200. Yeah, cool, nice. I'm Gucci in the coochie. Yeah, yeah. You're good, dude. You're good. Nice. Good question there. Can we do my math question? Yes, equity. We can do it. And I think you're going to be the last one because I'm running out of time. Uh, who's this going to? This is going to Taco. We had some other people. Nick and Miguel. I'm going to get to Miguel at some point. Yeah, you got to ask your questions early in the day, and then you got to be here <laughs> when I ask them. Uh, all right, which, which one equity do you need help with? We like my ma mass finance. What was on the screen? What did you see on the screen? I don't know what you saw on the screen. Okay, which, which one do you need help with? Equity? Which one?
<laughs> All of course, but do whichever one you like. Okay. <laughs> these are math science. Yeah, these are like math. Um, I forget. What, what do we call these? these are like, like challenge problems. Yeah. Is 23 a factorial? Maybe. Let's see. Uh, a lock code is made. Of, let's, do, let's try to do 23. This is like crypto stuff. Cryptography. Uh, four digit, digits that satisfy the, at least one digit is four, but neither the second digit nor the fourth digit is four. Okay. So here, let's like, let's like write our digits out like this, right? So at least one digit is four. Okay. So this has to be four or this has to be four, but neither the set, no, sorry, at, le or at least one digit is four, but neither the second nor the fourth. Okay. So, so. The first or the third has to be four, right? And this can be not four, and this can be not four. Exactly one digit is two, but the first digit is not two. Okay, so not two. Um, so, okay, so let's write this. Or four, or four, not two. Exactly one digit is two, but the first, so this could be or two, or two, or two. Yeah, no, no, you don't want to write each, each, exactly one digit is seven. Okay, cool. So, or seven, or seven, or seven, or seven. The code includes a one, or the code includes a six, or the code includes two fours? Uh. Okay, all right, one sec. The code includes a one. Or it includes a six, or it includes two fours. How many codes are possible? Okay. So. Uh, yeah, because then it's like, okay, if it includes two fours, so if it includes these two fours, then it doesn't have to be a one or a six. Yeah, do the two fours first. Let's do it. Okay. So, <clears throat> let's say that this one's a four and this one's a four. Okay, let's just say, let's say straight off the bat that it, that's how it works, right? Okay. Let's say this has to be four. This has to be four. Okay. Um, exactly one digit is a two. Okay. So, either this is a two or this is a two. Right? Uh, and then exactly one digit is a seven. Okay. So there you go. That's one code that's possible. Yeah. Yeah, the code includes 4, 2, and 7, which severely limits it. I agree. Um, so that's one way to do it, right? The other way is to only have one 4, right? But then you still have to have a 7 and a 2, right? And is there a requirement on the seven or the twos? No, they can be any of the other ones, all right? So. Okay. So I can have two and seven here. Or I can have two and seven here. Like this, right? Okay. And then based on that, it has to include a one or it includes a six, okay? Okay. So then this can be a 1 or a 6, and this can be a 1. Or it can be a 6, okay? So, um, I don't know. I see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I think there's only 5. 5 possibilities? Oh, wait, 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 wait. Yeah, but then the issue is that I could have made this the I could have made this the four or I could have made this the four, right? I see what we're saying here. Ugh, why does someone call me? Yeah, okay, because then this is what can happen. Sorry. Yeah. 
this can be the four, this can be the four, and then this can either be a uh, a one or six. This can be a one or a six. For four two four seven or four seven four two. Yeah, four seven. Uh, and then multiply by two as well. Okay. So I think it's seven possibilities. Is it not seven? What about six and one? Yeah, the six and one is, I counted there, there's two possibilities. For every time we do this, every time I leave one of these blank, uh, I can have a one and a six. <sighs> Thanks. <laughs> Oh, wait, oh. Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. Um, e uh, the first digit's not two. Oh, I could put a two in the third digit, though, as well, right? Yeah, I agree. <laughs> There's so many possible here. Uh, okay, all right. Uh, um, yeah, what an annoying question. There's a lot. There's a lot. Okay, I gotta run. I gotta run to another student. But equity, yeah, I think there's another. There's another two sets. You can work it out. You you have to just like do them. It sucks, but yeah, all good. All right, cool. I gotta run to another student. I gotta teach. Um. Nick, Miguel, I'll get to you guys next time, and noise, promise. Okay, cool. All right, let's head off the stream. Thank you, everyone, for coming to Office Hours. Had a really fun time working off you guys. Lots of great questions today. Amazing. Yes, love all our math streamers. Again, if you found us on Twitch, join our Discord. There's tons of the bots there doing that. Yeah, sorry, I gotta go, I gotta go pay my rent. Yeah, thanks for the dude. That's awesome, dude. Thanks, thanks, dude. Yeah, there are all our awesome math streamers. So if you want to, you know, go like join, keep the party going, learning more math. Those guys are all great. They do a bunch of really cool streams. Penn Center, I think, is going to do a complex analysis class over the summer. I'm excited for that one, dude. Um, but yeah, okay, sweet. Our next stream is going to be tomorrow. Uh, that's going to be an hour later, 5 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. Come on by. Uh, there's always the schedule. July, baby. I'm here for it, dude. Yeah. Raid clicks gold. Who's clicks? <laughs> Is he a gamer? Who's live? Who's live on the? Are any of the mass streamers live? Who's live? Currently live. Me, Talos, Axon, Danny. Okay. Who is clicks? Is clicks a gamer? I want. I want to raid more math people than gamers. <laughs> yes, I'm gonna. I'm gonna raid someone for you guys. One sec. He's the Fortnite. Oh, okay. Maybe when we do our gaming stream, I'll. I'll. Yeah. Okay. Let's raid Danny. Yeah, let's go. Let's go say hi to Danny. Cool. Uh, okay, go say hi to my boy Danny. If you got more math questions, please ask him. He's great. Um, otherwise, yeah, I will see you guys tomorrow. Um, and um, stay stay in tune for uh, we have a really cool AMA guest for Friday. So I'll let you guys know about that. All right, have a great, wonderful rest of your Tuesday. I'll see you guys on Wednesday. Peace.